Chip, his wife, and his daughter, uh, Rob McGuire, which says that the first thing he wants to eat once he's back home is a banana split with extra cherries on top, but no nuts, he says, because his daughter, one of his daughters, is allergic to nuts. Reporting live outside his home here on Michelle Fiore, now we go to Joni Lom, who has more. Good morning, Michelle. Uh, the release of Rob Bogoyan, which is pretty stunning news, and the reaction to it is very direct. Here in the neighborhood, his neighbors saw the impact that all this had on their neighbor, and so they're very happy that he's home. But there you are know, some elected officials and some constituents who uh, felt that he should have completed that 14-year sentence. When Rob Bogoyan was emerged from federal prison, he was not many times how he felt about coming home. He was mobbed by media there. Uh, uh, we need clips, though. We need clips today. We should go back. We should get clips from all the people that have had comments. Maybe people who said stuff about him going in, coming back. I mean, I think we should have, there should be a robust bunch of topics and stuff that we can refer to. I want the JB clip. I want the clip of them talking on the phone because I want to know what happened. What was the rest of the conversation? At 8 o'clock, I'm going to talk about how it affects everybody. So we should try and find clips from JB, from Madigan, from all the people who were big players back then. And now we should be looking for responses from all the people who said he should stay in jail, uh, should get out. Because I think it's all going to play to its consequences. But that's at 8 o'clock. Like, to me, we need the, the effing thing. This is golden. All of the good stuff. Do we have clips from Jesse Jackson? Do we have clips from the time when they went into the room to negotiate? Do we have clips that says, bring it on? Right? All of that. Let's do a show. And Brian, 18 minutes, and it's some slow traffic from 95th into 79th Street. Out there, that line is looking pretty clear. And the inbound to C.B. Urban, you're looking at 18 minutes with some slow traffic between Halsted and the Dan Ryan connector. And if you're traveling on the inbound Stevenson Tri-State to Lakeshore Drive, you're looking at 35 minutes. Inbound Eisenhower Mannheim to the old post office, 30 minutes. And the outbound is 16. Inbound Kennedy O'Hare to downtown, you're looking at 22 minutes. And traveling out to O'Hare, 21. Inbound Edens and outbound, 15 minutes both way. And the Lakeshore Drive south and northbound are clear right now. Today it will be sunny and colder with a high of 28 degrees. A low of 16 degrees is expected tonight. 
It's currently 19 degrees, and that's a look at our traffic and weather now. I'm Samantha Thomas on 1690 AM WVON. The views expressed on our programs are not necessarily those of WVON, Midway Broadcasting Corporation, or our participating sponsors. Live from the Xfinity Studios at WVON. You're listening to The Morning Show with Mays Jackson on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Wake up, Chicago. Wake up, world. And you better wake it on up for real because there's a lot going on. This is the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, how you feeling this morning? Hey, good morning. Happy Freedom Day. Man, happy Freedom Day. It is funny to me. Not funny. I bet you there's probably Chicago. nobody who has woken, woken up happier today than Rod Blagojevich. Well, maybe Patty. Yeah. <laughs> Patty. Patty might have got. Let me stop. Let me stop. Hey, y'all. Uh, it is the WVON Morning Show. Rob Bogoyevich. You know what? The Rob Bogoyevich is free, free, free uh, today. I'm going to tell you what. I, got, I was tickled pink. I was tickled, tickled pink when I heard it. I couldn't wait to call elected officials all over and be like, hey, did y'all hear? Rod is getting out. And people was like, what, wait, huh? Yeah. Wait, are you sure? And then they started. People hung up, clicked off. Like, let me find out what's going on. Yeah, it wasn't like he's getting out. It's like he's on the bus. No, well, no. Well, actually, when I found out, they hadn't released him yet because it takes about four hours to process you out. Uh, and so when I first found out, I was like, "Uh, Rod's getting out." And people were like, "Get out of here!" I'm like, "No, literally, he's getting out of here." Uh, Todd, but you know what? Let's do this. Let's get the show started, and then we'll talk about all of it. It's the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Mace Jackson. That guy in the background you heard was my co-host, Todd Stroger. Uh, but got to say what's up to Samantha Thomas in the newsroom. Samantha, how you feeling this morning? You're made it to hump day. You know what I'm saying? You sound like you got a frog in your throat. I heard that. I heard that. Let me tell you what, though. You know, I don't, I don't even really talk to people on their first week of if they do the morning show for the first week. Because I don't never believe them. I never believe that they are going to be here on time. And ready to go. Now, you. every time I come out of the back cave, you are sitting in your seat ready to go. Matter of fact, you be getting here quicker than some of the regulars. You know? You, see, you, I, mm, you know what? Now, if I didn't like Jennifer Thompson so much, I might move you into one of these spots. Because, you know, one day when I'm famous, I appreciate coming out of my... I appreciate coming out and knowing that everybody is locked and loaded, ready to go. Well, one day when you're famous, I'll be retired. Yeah, you know. <laughs> the, uh, that's what. Well, thank you, Samantha. It's good having you with them. It's been great. You made it to Hump Day. Now let's see if you can finish strong. All, all right. Now I gotta say what's up to Miss Sonia Escobar because y'all know we cannot fly this bad boy without the musical conductor. I'm telling you, we tried to fly it the other day. I was like, what kind of turbulence is this? Goodness gracious! How you feeling this morning, Sonia? 
I'm feeling good too. You know what? It's something about letting people get out for free. You know what I mean? Like when you feel like they've been done wrong. And I, I'm not I, like, so you know I'm Mr. What's in it for the black people, right? I'm Mr. What's in it for the black people. And I don't, you know, I don't really get super excited for white folks. But I'm really happy that Rob Bogoyevich got out because I still tied to this day, to this day, I am not exactly sure what he did to get 14 years. I'm not. Oh, I, mean, I don't know about 14 years. I mean, I know what he did, but I don't know about 14 years. I don't, I'm going to tell you. We're going to talk about this because I just think that, um, I think it's going to be funny to, it's funny to watch the responses of everybody. You know why it's funny to watch the responses of everybody? Because they got to be real careful. Because they don't know if, like if they say, lock him up, keep him, he should have stayed in jail. For, and everybody's under investigation right now. Right, so they can't really talk too much smack because the odds are they not getting a pardon. No, right, right? right, and so they want to talk smack, but everybody's like, "Wait a minute, I don't know if I'm on a wiretap." And can I just say this for the record? Because there were people talking to me yesterday, telling me about you know like how terrible Rod was and what a terrible governor was and how he and I was like, "Now these are people, people." whose bosses may have been guilty of tax fraud, or not guilty, but is in court for tax fraud. You got all the stuff that is unfold. I'm going to just say this. The stuff that is unfolding right now is going to make Rod Bogoyevich blush. It is. It is, Todd. Because, I mean, we are already at rape cover-ups. We are already at the cover-up of rapes. Now, I'm just telling you, there was nothing in you cannot tell me that this thing is effing golden. Is equivalent to. Uh, by the way, we kept quiet about the rape. But I know, I know, I know. I'm t it's too early for all that. So let me do this. Let me get the soul plane up to fifty thousand feet and say what's up to everybody. This is the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd. So I guess there is no headline bigger than Rob Glovich getting out. I don't think so. Uh, but I want to point out something. You know, a lot of people died. A lot of people died? Who died? Oh, wait a minute. First of all, let me send a... Uh, Kenny B sent me a note to tell me that uh, uh, ABC7 Eyewitness News anchor, former anchor Bob Petty, died last night at the age of 79 years old. Right. I remember Bob Petty when I was a little kid. Oh, yeah. Man, I remember Bob Petty. Bob Petty looked like a player, though, back in the day, boy. He like yeah, you know, he, he's twenty years older than me. I didn't. I didn't never really ran into Bob Petty. I don't think. I think he was older than everybody, really. But I remember. I just remember Bob Petty when I was a little kid. Yeah. Watching him, Bob Petty. Wasn't Bob Petty on during Fahey Flynn era? No, he's not that old. I don't think. I'm telling you, I remember Bob Petty. Then Fahey Flynn and what was the other one? And well, you know, figure it out, Todd. I know you're gonna go. You uh, know, we'll figure it all out. Yeah. Uh, but our condolence to uh all of the. The news uh, media, particularly black news media, because there's not a lot of black anchors, and then there's really not a lot of. Sh Let me stop. I was going to say something. now, but back then, no. Yeah, but the thing with the the anchors now are, they're often um, softened up for black people, it's if you know what I mean. <laughs> like they, you know, what I'm saying like they fit multiple categories. I'm telling you, like mm -hmm. if you pay attention, like once you started seeing the when, when the like. Hey, are you Asian also? Are you Hispanic? <laughs> that or something. Yeah. That or something. But no, not that. What I'm talking sure. about is, you know, they they like to blend everything together, and they be like, "Look, I got, I bet I've got it, right?" And then that's when you get the dancing with the stars type stuff going on. I, you know, I'm not gonna go here. <laughs> okay. But Todd, you don't get it. No. Okay. Well, when we talk about it, what the thing is nowadays, like think about Don Lemon. Right? Yeah. Those are the anchors that they look for black people now. Oh. Right? Got it? <laughs> Got it. All right, look. So I'm saying, like, you don't see Warner Saunders, strong black anchor man. You see, hello? Catch me with the. Okay, I'm going to quit. <laughs> All right, uh, did you see the Boy Scouts are filing bankruptcy, Todd? Yes, it's a it's a protection issue for them. It's a protection. It seems like that's the problem in the first place. If they would have protected the boys in the first place, then they wouldn't be worrying about this. But they are taking a page out of the Catholic Church 
church's book to protect their assets. They are filing bankruptcy to protect themselves from all of the sexual lawsuits, um, uh, abuse lawsuits. How crazy is that, man? Think about it. It's like, but can I tell you something, Todd? Mm -hmm. See, that's, that is exactly why I don't. I was having a debate yesterday about the fair tax, right? And I was trying to explain, you know, like somebody was telling me how the fair tax was going to really be good for people, et cetera. And I was like, you know what? There's always, it always sounds good until the rich people get their lobbyists involved and they say, we're not paying all that. Yeah. And and I, I think that is essentially the same thing where rich people figure out a way to beat, even when they're wrong, they figure out a way to beat the system. And in this case, so all the little boys that they have misabused or done wrong, they're still trying to figure out a way how not to pay them. No, I think that what they're trying to do is to figure out how not to go under. While paying them. Yeah, while paying them. Okay, so they want to pay them a little less than they deserve. Speaking of paying, I don't did, know. did you see the city of Chicago is settling another $10 million, is selling a, uh, settling a lawsuit today for $10 million? So, black people, when we go down to city council today, we can watch as the city gives away $10 million because, once again, police officers shot someone in the back. Ah, but alas. Mm -hmm. huh. Let's talk Chicago 1690. We'll be back after traffic and the weather. Y'all, it's so much. It's so funny to watch this debate. Like, not debate, to watch this Rob Bogoyevich release. So, Todd, you think Rob was a bad guy? Bad? Yeah. I mean, I'm, you think you wouldn't. I have to say he was no friend of mine, but. Well, who was a friend of yours? <laughs> no, like I'm serious. Like I feel like every I'm, and I'm and I'm saying this. I mean, I am. Comedic. Well, no, no. I mean, like towards the end, after the you know, after a couple of years, after the the press said uh, give me enough kidney punches, yeah, he was a ton of friends. But no, he pretty much started out as soon as I got there as as being on the other side because he was with the white liberal Lakeshore. He was probably friends with Forest Playpool. Didn't he come from that area? Well, what was yeah. the genesis of it? Do you think with Rob? Yeah, uh, he couldn't stand Speaker Madigan, and Speaker Madigan was a source of information and advice for me. Mm. So okay, so he beat up Speaker Madigan, and then he throw me in there too. He'd be like, "Well, Stroger and Madigan are trying to tax you to death, you know that kind of stuff, unnecessary stuff." That's why I don't. Uh, I say he's no friend of mine. Okay, he, but he didn't have to, to even mention me. Uh, I mean, I'm not even involved in that state crap. I don't care one way or another. So you're I, just easy punch. It was like you, that's everybody exactly right. take a punch at you, their numbers go up. Exactly, I, and I didn't appreciate it. <laughs> I actually I, I came in with uh, Rob. And I mean, you were with Maddie. right? Which is the power to be. And I understand that, but I mean, when, like, when, when you say you're with Madigan. I'm, that doesn't mean I'm not a Madigan soldier. It was none of that kind of stuff. It was, I need you. You don't truly need me, but you do need me. Because I got a lot of my jobs over here. You <laughs> got a lot of jobs right. over here. Right. So I have to tolerate you right. until I can figure out a way to undercut you with Terry O'Brien. And unfortunately, my shit didn't work. So it went to Tony Preckwinkle. Yeah, but but see, I, I, I that that was politics, and that's how I take it. It came a point where it's like, well, shoot, he can't win, and I and I understood that after a, a while, you know, after being in the paper, and if you go out in the street, and every time somebody says a have a taxi, hey, that was you. And you're like, I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. Then you know you're in trouble. Um, so yeah, that that I call that business. But go ahead, bitch, I call that just being me. So what do you call post your, your loss with Madigan? Uh, I think, to be honest with you, in my opinion, I think Madigan's people were trying to, to protect them more. And I had a Tony Pratt problem that was keeping me from, from doing things. So you believe that after everything that we saw, that if he wanted to do something for somebody, that Tony Preckwinkle could stop him? Like Tony Preckwinkle could not stop him from getting. It depends you. On, on on what it was, you know. Okay. The, the the key to to talking to the speaker, and I I probably learned that a little later, is what do you ask for. He's not going to be like, 
hey, I'm going to do something for you, and I'm going to figure that out. It's more of, hey, can you do this for me, speaker? And he say, either yes or no. Yeah. Okay. And so he said, yeah. But the yes was with uh, Commonwealth Edison and People's Gas. And People's Gas never helped anybody. You know? <laughs> and Commonwealth Edison, too closely tied to, to Pratt Winkle. And nothing ever happened. Man, I, I, I'm, I'm okay. This is what I think about that. To be honest, with you. And, and you know, I like John Hooker, but I don't think he was going to be any friend of mine in, in that instance. He'd be like, "No, this guy is is uh, a pariah." Okay. Um, and I don't think the speaker liked me that much. <laughs> I mean, yeah. he. I mean. I, I mean, that he him. saw me, I was like, oh, that was nice. <laughs> mm. I should have said something okay. more. Different. This is Mary J. Blige first song. Is it? Mm. If you to fall. Katie, you didn't tell Mike to call me for you. You are, <laughs> you are tuned in to the Talk of Chicago 1698. I'm your host, Mace Jackson. Got my co-host, Torch Trojan. Hey, Todd. Mace, That's Father MC. I was about to say, you said Mary. That's Blige. the first time we saw Mary J. Blige. Oh, okay. But, she was but singing it wasn't back. her song. Okay. She's singing back. Listen right here. Bring it up. That's the very first time we heard, and then Puffy was dancing in this. Oh. This was Puffy was being a background dancer, rocking it out, and this I know is. I the song, but I've never seen the, the video. Oh well, it's good, man. It was like when we used to come home from school after class at U of I, and then we would run to watch BT because we would watch Rap City, and this would come on, and you'd be like, "Man, Chris Thomas would be doing those jokes." <laughs> remember, Chris? Uh, you probably don't know. Remember? No, I don't. Oh, <laughs> man, remember Rap City? Man, remember when BT used to be just like? Remember Sherry? Remember Don Donnie Tom Donnie what Donnie Simpson? Oh yeah, of course. Uh Sherry and Donnie Simpson. What remember to a Dallas? Remember her? What happened to uh man? That was good old days, man. Good old days. Did I ever mention tell you that I got somebody on one oh six in park? Did I ever mention to you that I helped uh Roxy get her start? I did. And then she played me. It was crazy. Like I gave her my suitcase and she went off. Oh, you make fun of me and you got played. I, you know, <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't by a dude in the shower. All right, look, oh. this is Tug Chicago 1690. Uh, you, you make them too easy, Todd. You make those too easy. <laughs> yeah, I fought that, I fought that guy off. <laughs> with, with those um, 22s. 22s. <laughs> you got 22s. You got cap guns. That's right. You can hurt a guy. Todd <laughs> Ty, Ty got cap guns. Todd pulled his muscles up and was like. And it's a 25. Pack. No, there's a 22, too. No, but I it's got called a deuce deuce. Deuce. No, you got a cap gun. That's a twenty. And you got a cap gun. Got you ain't even got the cap. Action. You ain't even got the cap gun on the ring. You got the cap gun <laughs> with the paper. Remember the strips of paper with yeah, the cap guns. That. And then you, if you didn't have a cap gun, you would roll them out on the thing and then bang them with a rock and they <laughs> pop. Uh, oh my goodness. We gotta do some old school things that kids did. You know what I really want to do? I've decided, Todd. Um, I was, you know, I was reflecting on All Star Weekend and I was thinking like. I don't know, this is a little bit off. Yeah, I'm just letting y'all know. Get ready, because we about to light it up on the Rob Agoyevich thing. I just got to get some of this stuff out. Ty, I was thinking about, um, remember I was telling you about the All-Star game? And I felt like I was like, like there's this pressure, because people are playing, like, how many parties can I go to in one night and take a picture by the, you know, like, all the cool stuff. So it seems like it's going to be super cool. Yeah. I think one of, I think my next event that I throw I'm going to have a phone limit. Like, you can take your phone, your Facebook Live, your everything, and then I'm going to tell you, you got to put your phone away and lock it up. And you got to listen to the DJ. 
and you gotta listen to the music and you gotta be engaged at the party. Not talking to the people like you're not here, you're not here, but like I'm here right now. Because I think that um people have just forgotten, Todd, how to be present. I mean, just think about this. I do the morning show and I got fifty different social media things going on and everything. I can't wait. I think I'm gonna have like a just a you can't do anything but party party. Hmm. Seriously. Think about it. What did you do? Like, what did you do? Shoot, 90s, 2000s. It, uh, 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 let's do this. We're going to have a real party because I don't even think y'all know what a party is. Like, I don't think that. And I think that even adults have forgotten because they'd be like, ooh, I got to go left. <laughs> Come on, Zimby, take a picture with me. Take a picture with me. Take a picture with me. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like I told you, I, I was like, dang, I forgot to, to go Facebook Live. So I was actually here. <laughs> All right. Um, did you see the governor is having his state of the state today? The governor? Yeah, I saw that. Under the state of state, he's going to have his budget address. Boy, I'm going to tell you, the governor's got to be feeling like a long tail cat in a room full of rocking chairs right What'd now. What's that? Sonia, do you have the clip? Do you have the clip? No? No clips? Okay. Well, we're going to play the clip of the governor, Governor Bogoyevich talking, then Governor Bogoyevich talking to now Governor uh, J.B. Pritzker, and they were talking about Jesse White. Right? Oh, now, you got it? Play it. Play it for me. Because... I got a great idea for you, though. Okay. I'm sure you, I'm sure you thought of this one, but Jesse White. Uh, even though I know you guys aren't like you know bosom buddies or anything, it covers you on the African American thing. Correct. He's totally, uh, he, he's Senate material in a way that Emil Jones isn't, if I may say. Okay. Um, I mean, you know, he's just, I don't know how to say it exactly, but uh, Emil's a little more crass. Right. And um, and and it opens up the Secretary of State spot, which is the key spot. Right. You know, controls jobs, etc. And it'd be a lot less pressure on you. You don't have to put an African American in that spot. Correct. Um, and so you can pick an ally, or you can pick, you know, I don't know, Jay Hoffman, or I don't know, whoever you might want to pick that would be helpful to you if you were running for re-election in 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 O10. And. I know the Jesse White thing is like it's not a perfect thing because he's not like your best friend, but it does cover you and it doesn't get you Jesse Jackson Jr., which, oh, God, please. I mean, I, what a... Come listen to me. I, I mean, it would be a nightmare. Pause, 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 you know. pause. Because I want to save this. So I just... I, so I'm thinking today. I'm thinking today. To... <laughs> I, so I'm thinking today that there's going to be questions for JB. You think? Do you think they're going to ask him what do you think? And do you think he's got to be just a little careful about how he addresses that? Because right now we don't know what's on those tapes. But and, he may have already made a statement. Uh, well, he made a statement. But you know Rod going to be talking today, right? You, look, they they had to... Oh, they got a press conference that he left. I might have to go over there. I might have missed the city council to go over there. But no, I'm not going to miss it. But Todd... Yeah, I know his brother is already out there talking. For him. And talking smack. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Now, could you imagine him being like, nah? Could, we, could you tell us, Governor, uh, former Governor Bogoyevich, what else was on those tapes? What else did you all discuss? You guys were pretty tight. So, what was the deal going to be? Right? Like, y'all, yeah, do you understand? Like, everybody's panties are in a bunch right now. Like, if, 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 you know how they say, is a frog's tail water, water, what is it? Waterproof? Water, waterproof? Is a frog's butt waterproof? Because it's so tight. Like, right now, there's a lot of tight sphincters in Springfield. Right? Because it's like everybody who would want to take a, take a whack at Bogoyevich has to be careful. Because guess what? The next day, they could be on tape being released. Yeah, talking to him or just talking to somebody. Mike McClain. Uh -huh. Talking to <laughs> think about her right now. Talking to Danny Solis. Yes, yeah. and 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 think about the vindictive. Think about it. Not remember the. Can I tell you why I think Trump did this too? Remember all of those prosecutors, the former prosecutors, the eleven hundred prosecutors that signed the letter saying Donald Trump was bogus for the sentencing, blah, 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 blah. Did you notice that he called a lot of those prosecutors out, like, for being unfair, particularly Fitzgerald? 
Yes. And Comey, like I feel like when they signed that letter, he was like, oh, well, let me do a little damage to your legacy. Hey, y'all, we'll talk about it more when we come back because I want to understand on the social media question of the day, why do black people and white people feel so differently about Rob Bogoyevich? It's time for Chicago 1690. We'll be back. Oh, my God. Oh my God, this is going to be epic today. I I can't wait for the press. I mean, he already was talking about criminal justice reform. So, you know, Trump is going to... Let me... Did you, okay, so I just... All right, so the breakdown. Because I'm like geeked up, but I'm not... I'm jumping all over the place. The first thing I saw was that I feel like Trump really... Well, first of all, he did this the day before the governor's address, budget address, which is going to suck a hole in all of his coverage and he's going to be the governor will be juxtaposed with Rob Bogoyevich right now I also think that this could <laughs> every time you see them you're going to see them and you're going to I'm just doing all the stuff that the press is going to do later on today right because mm -hmm. now and I just need to be first because <laughs> now the press is going to be like well what was on that tape you think they ain't going to ask him you think they ain't going to ask Rod do you think they're not going to ask about the breadth and the depth of the conversation now that's the first thing Secondly, if you paid attention to the people that Trump released, he released a whole bunch of people that were like nefarious. But when he comes to the black community, what he's going to say is, look, this girl, I released her. Her house was a stash house, but they gave her a much longer sentence for holding crack than powder cocaine. Mm -hmm. This lady way down sharing something, something, something. She got her house was a stash house, but also they gave her the book because of crack. Right, same he. So he's gonna use that and say, "I let her out." Similarly, now I see him then taking a stab at all of those prosecutors. Right, I expect that the more of their, more of their super hot. I mean, because you think about the conviction of Rob Bogoyevich made the lawyers that. So once they did the Rob Bogoyevich thing, they they went on to become bazillionaires. Right. Let me charge you $2,000 an hour as a defense attorney. Mm -hmm. So now he's about to unravel a bunch of their legacy. I don't think it's going to stop them from getting money. However, what I also think it does is it sends a signal that they don't have the same relationship with the Justice Department that, like that fraternal sort of thing. So I think he's going to bust that racket up a little bit too. Um, He's going to campaign for Trump. And I just say you put him up as a foil any anytime. Like, really. Can you imagine Rob Bogoyevich having a... If I was... Like, I swear to God, if I could get him on a morning show to have a full time... Just to be the commentator on all of the corruption that's going on right now. You think I tell the Illinois Minotti story? Could you imagine him telling it and he went to jail for it? Yeah. He talks more crap than anything. I, I don't know if I really go with him. I think like this. I think that. I think the. I think this is a perfect example of the political class versus the regular people. Like I feel like. Wait, wait. So who's the regular person in this? I'm saying the black people. I'm gonna tell you that I think regular black people. Like, here's what I think. If you are political, then. You distaste. You had disdain for Rod. I think Rod. If you if you weren't in this crew, I think if you were. You know what I learned though well, well, is that people who were working with him didn't learned like him. that this guy's not all here. I heard that too. I mean, but I still think that that's how I feel about. I'm not not. I'm not say not all here. I feel like everybody has a public persona that we believe, and then you can go behind the scenes and be like, wait, that's not, right? Like, so I feel like every, most politicians that I know, when you see them in the podium, they're like the wizard, and then when you see them as, Rick, when you see them announced, you be like, really? Like, again. Let me tell you a story. I probably told this one. I'm with your boy, Ken. We're at the Harborside. The governor uh, calls, I believe. And he's talking to the governor. And Ken says, hey, governor, I'm with Ty's children. Say hello to Ty. Hmm, fuck Ty. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. <laughs> he, he didn't put it that way, but uh, Ken hands me the phone. 
and it's Jay Hoffman. And Jay Hoffman says, hey, Todd, what's going on? I'm like, hey, Jay, what's happening? Right, right, right. I know Jay from way back, just like I know uh, uh, Rod. And uh, he says, you know, you know, call the office anytime you need anything, right? I'm like, all right, bye. But see, yeah, that's Rod Gorge. He couldn't even say hello. That's the kind of guy he was. I mean, I feel like that's, I feel like Rod. And you're right. That's probably exactly what he said as soon as Jay hung up. I feel like, though. So, I, you know, I like, you know, keeping uh, grudges. <laughs> <laughs> so, say, uh, quite a lot. Just need some tender love and care. Yeah. I give good love. I'll buy your clothes. I'll cook your dinner too, yeah, babe. Soon as I get home from work. I'll pay your rent, your faithful lover, baby. Soon as I get home, soon as I get home from work. Girl, I treat you right and I never lie. For all that it's worth, I give good love, good love, good love. Good love, good love. Excuse me, since you are tuned into the talk show, Chicago 1698. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co host, to our show, Todd. I'm having a great, great, great day today. I'm telling you, I am. I really wish I could go to Springfield today. I really wish I could go to Springfield. And you know who I, who I would like to go to Springfield with? Who? Rob Bogoyevich. I know, but you know what? Could you imagine? Could you imagine today at the budget address if you looked up he was in the and he was sitting in the gallery? <laughs> <laughs> now here's the thing. Here's the thing. I was thinking, but you know, did you hear about the speaker has a list of people that are banned from the state house or the Secretary of State has a list of people that are banned from the state house? Really? What, yeah. What, what can get you banned? Uh, uh, violence? Well, uh, I guess um, we have to ask uh, Jack Franks, who we haven't heard much of, but he's on that list, right? And so, is Rich, that a sexual harassment thing. Yeah. Yeah. But but they don't. We don't know what it is because remember they haven't given it to us. We just heard allegations. Oh. See how man, it's all crazy, man. All right. So Todd, uh, let me make sure I get all the headlines out because I want to get the headlines out because I got to get back to the ride story. Uh, Boy Scouts officials call for the end of attacks on immigrants. What attacks on immigrants? What is that? There was like a big press conference yesterday with Chewy, Kim, and everybody, and they were like, we're going to stop the attacks on immigrants. The, the legal ones? Yeah, I think they were saying, I think it was Donald Trump again about the, oh, the, the ICE? ICE teams saying that there was an attack on the census. I'm going to tell y'all what. I, I find it hard to uh, see when the Democrats start start all that kind of we need to, to kiss their ass so much that we're just going to talk about illegal activity like it's normal. What, what do you mean? Basically, what they're saying is if there are people here illegally, we don't want you to detain them and send them back. I, I, I don't even see what the value is because they can't vote. Yeah, like yeah. I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying, like, why are you having a press conference during an election for people who can't vote? They're not citizens, and they're not citizens. It's like we're saying, please break. Okay, okay, okay. This is what I'm gonna say. It is not a good look for the upholders of the law to advocate breaking of the law. I'm just saying. It just, it just, it like that's like the Kamala Harris and the black people. Crying about white folks and met Latinos down at the border, and we got issues right here. Oh, um, last one time. Did you see SpaceX flights? SpaceX. Is, is that one where you can pay to go fly in the space, but check it out. They was like, we gonna send you. They're gonna go past the space station. Yeah, they're gonna fly up in space. They're gonna spin around a few times and they're gonna come down. But he's not putting the pilot in. It's a robot. Let me tell you something, dog. You ain't flying me up in the air. You, well, you gotta have some skin in the game too. 
Like, all six passengers died, and the robot. The robot lived. And the robot is being repaired today. All right. Okay, guys. We are going to rob the boy a bitch, rob the boy a bitch, rob the boy a bitch, because I want to hear from you all. But I'm going to kick this conversation off with the social media question of the day. You ready, Todd? Of the day, of the day, of the day. Uh, social media question of the day, of the day, of the day. Todd, why do black and white people view Rod Blagojevich so differently? Give us a call, 312-374-8130, 312-374-8130. I am going to tell you, Todd, that it is it's so funny to me to, not funny, it's interesting how Rob Bogoyevich seems, it, it seems in my estimation, and I don't have any polling or any empirical data to prove it, but it seems like black people have an affinity for Rob Bogoyevich, or they feel like he's been done wrong. Yeah, they do. Um, what I hear. I, I, I mean, I'm going to tell you, I liked Rob Bogoyevich. I liked the fact that he stuck it to um, who are you sticking to? Come on, tell me who. I love the fact that he would get on TV and he would give it to the guys that have been. He would give it to the green team. Oh yeah, yeah. He was all he was all over him, but he never got to stick it to him. Well, I mean, I, I well, because they stuck it to him in jail. However, but I think he stuck himself. That's another. I, but I, I feel like the green. I felt like when Rob Bogoyevich and Emo Jones were in Springfield, I thought that we at least had a shot. Like I think about when Emo, and we talk about when Emo Jones was there, mm-hmm. and there were black lobbyists and all that stuff. I was there when Rob Bogoyevich got inaugurated, and I remember all the black people being down, and I remember it just being. And I'm telling you, it was Chocolate City for a minute, regardless of whether you liked them or not. Oh no, there was contracts flowing. No, I, black folks was getting a piece. I, I truly, I mean, I agree with you. Right? I, I got love for uh, how black people were being treated. I just thought he was an idiot, but that doesn't mean that black people didn't pop up in spaces they had never been. I'm saying that, I mean, I remember the, like being at IDOT. Like, I remember for all the years and all the years of being a faithful, loyal soldier, and Rob Bogoyevich, we helped him on one election, and he was like, you got a real company. We gonna help you get a contract, and I got a contract working on a Dan Ryan reconstruction project. And I remember being like, I remember being like, you know, like they would tell all the stories about how you had to contribute and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I remember going and being like, hey, man, I done made some money. I can contribute now, blah, 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 blah. And they was like, we don't even want your money. No, they didn't need your money. They, no, they were like, we don't want your money. Go grow your business. Go grow your business. I remember. And I would always get tickets to the events and all that stuff. And I remember... When I got the multi, the four million dollar contract to do the outreach for the Dan Ryan reconstruct, it changed our lives for a minute. Mm-hmm. And then, door, two white boys with a, a another advertising agency told me that we heard you got. We were told that you got a four million dollar contract. We want to subcontract you with two million. Two million. And I was like, if I get, I, and you know, I'm like, man, you know, they was, they were representatives of the green team they were associated with and they felt that they had or I had taken their contract right that was theirs it was theirs and so they just basically told me I had to give up the two million and I was like if I give you two million I'm gonna go in the day I'm gonna lose money and they were like well that's really not our issue but we'll be looking forward to it and I said no and I remember going to to the Department of Transportation like man I, I'm trying to grow, and I'm hiring black people. I had over 200 people on payroll, black people from the Dan Ryan area. And I remember the white guys being like, and I remember going to the governor's office being like, these guys are, and they was really representatives of the green team who were now losing stuff that was automatically theirs. Yeah, yeah. They were like, so they just basically was like, dude on Pulaski said we should be coming to talk to you, and we would get it. And I didn't get it to him, and guess what happened, Todd? What? I got a federal investigation. Mm-hmm. I am telling you that I enjoyed Rob Bogoyevich because, as you, everybody, every, and all of the inside political people who were already in yeah. were like, "He's crazy. He's terrible. He's blah 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 blah." But all the new people 
who were getting opportunities and chances. And I'm telling you, he never hit the brothers up like that. Uh-huh. It And it was like they were determined to get rid of him because he had upset the apple cart. I remember going to the lobbying firm I was at, and they was like, he required that we paid him as much as Madigan. And it was like, well. He's the governor. I mean, he's the governor. I mean, and they were like, I mean, he wants us to raise and get out and bunt. And I'm like, you doing it right now. Everything you talking about, he had you do. You just was mad. Cause, and what happened was the white boys was mad. The green team was mad because he was like, oh, no, I see what y'all doing. But y'all going to do it over here. I'm the governor. And they, I, I just want to understand why do you think. Like black people, I feel like he pandered straight to black people, not pandered, went straight to them and said, I don't care how it costs, give me the black people because they will win the election for me. Bro, it is pandered. But it was effective. Wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't been pandered two cents. How's that working out? No, no. I mean, I can tell you, my, my man, Stan Moore, he got a job in, in transportation. As soon as Pat Quinn got there, he fired him. And guess what? And Stan Moore, what, I was in there during Stan Moore and Gilbert Viegas. And I used to call them Hoppy and Smitty, right? Because they would, and can I tell you, during Rod's time when they were there in the Office of Minority Business Development, Mm -hmm. let me tell you what, they was going out making sure that black people got contracts. Like, straight up. That's that's how I have an undying love for Stanley right now. Because when the white boys tried to do me, Stanley and Gil stood up. And they was like, nah, and they went up. And they got all of those people. And I'm just telling y'all. It has not been the same. Like, you didn't like Rod, but I'm telling you right now, that was personal. Or that was business personal. Yeah. But overall, I feel like Rod was a good governor for black people. Yeah, no, I mean, I could see some of the good things he did. But I also had some uh, disdain for him because I thought he, he urinated it away. Uh, what? I, and I'm going to say this. I think that... I mean, he cut his own throat is what I mean. No, I think he. I think that he had circumstances, and they used those circumstances, and they rejiggered them. Because I'm just telling you like this: that Senate seat deal, that happens every single day. Oh no, I I, I think that's just that over prosecution. You know, I'm no friend of prosecution. <laughs> okay, let's talk about it all when we come back. It's talk Chicago 1690. No, it was just too big. He I, I, sometimes I wondered how he'd get in a room. I mean, I think that, I think it's that ego sometimes, though, yeah. that drives the most successful people. Like, you think about... Oh, no, you have to have ego. To be the president, to be someone who even has the ability to think you could lead, you have to have a certain ego. And I... But his was out of control, though. And, that, and that's what got him in trouble. It was out of control to politicians. It was not out of control to regular people. And it's like the regular... The, the, but who cares about that? What got him in trouble was it was out of control. I think that what got him in trouble was he said, we finna bust this bad boy up. And he had a team made with Emo Jones. And they was like, it's two to one right now. We finna roll these punks. And even though they didn't like each other, they had an understanding that you take yours, I take mine. Well, they had an understanding that we don't like this guy and we can bust up his group. Yeah. And they busted it up. And guess what they did? And so, just like he shut down the government for four years for Bruce Rauner, he was willing to do anything he could for his power. And so, they figured out a way to get Rod, and they got him. I'm telling you now, just the same fucking... And they all that's, they did... That's where I say he cut his own throat. He, he he tried to be too clever. That's the problem when you think you're the smartest guy in the room and, and you can't listen to anybody else. I don't know who, who was t- talking to him, but obviously... It was nobody with any sense. No, that's, all right, because anybody with any sense would say, just bow down to Madigan. That's no, the fucking problem. No, that's not the problem. That's your problem. My problem with him is he thought he was so big, he's going to like, I'm going to stomp on everybody. You can't stomp on, you're just the governor. You're not the God. You got, you. I don't care if you like him or not. You do what you do, but you still have to realize that it takes more than just you to make this actually turn. I'm saying that, quite frankly. What they knew And he had people in the house that were with him. So you got to have some sense when you're fighting. Here's what I think. I think that... Because this thing, 1500, where you just take a sword. I agree. I think that everybody has their own ego and their way of dealing with it. And I'm saying that... I could be out of control. I knew it. (laughs) 
No, I think that most people have learned to stay in their lane. He didn't learn his place. He didn't learn it. And what he did not realize was that by not staying in your place, that they controlled the shit all the way up. He thought he had. I'll give you that. I'm saying, though, that what what I saw with that was, was that anybody that is going to upset their economic base. I'm telling you, every time I saw Rod somewhere, black people loved him. Like, loved oh, yeah. him. No e- ego talk, all that. All you got to do is listen to the, to the radio. I mean, I listened to the, the, the uh, afternoon show. Yeah, they were all over him. And, and the politicians didn't like his arrogance, but he knew that what I feel like what he knew was, as long as I hold on to them people, fuck all y'all. That's what I think he thought. And politically, politically, if he and when they realized they weren't going to be able to get him politically, then they had to prosecute him. And so what they did was they ginned up, and because they made all the judges all the way up again, guys. No, he made it easy for him. That's that's my problem with him. Uh, like you talking about that about that. I forgot what you're talking about. But what I see was the most blaring thing that he did. Because he did a lot of stuff that he wasn't supposed to. But the thing that they could get him on is with the Children's uh, Memorial Hospital. Once he, he he did that, he was through. There was no way he was going to be able to come back from that. You can't tell a hospital, I'm not going to do any work for you until I see $10,000 in my campaign. A Children's Hospital? Shoot. They were going to get him. I feel like the Children's Hospital, though, when I was listening to things, basically he had already done the work for Children's Hospital and then called up afterwards and was like, yo, raise, I mean. No, he said, no, I remember it well because I was like. They just did it on the news last night. No, I remember it well. He he says to John Harris, he says. Who's snitching now for another person. He said, if you tell, no, you tell those guys, nothing's happening until I see that $10,000. I, he said he, it wrong. He made it easy for him. He said it wrong. Okay, he said it wrong, but I I mean... Bring them out, bring them out. Bring them out, bring them out. Bring them out, bring them out. You are tuned in to the Top of Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co host, Todd Stroger Todd. And I'm going to tell you what, man. I'm tickled pink. I don't even know if I could be pink. But I'm tickled pink, boy, because I'm glad Rob Bogoyevich got out. I'm going to tell you, man. Everybody's pink somewhere. <laughs> yes, yeah, some places, some people better than others. Hey, but that's a whole different story. Hey, check this out, though, Todd. See, I feel like I, I really want to do this because I feel like there are black people all over the state whose voices have been muted. And because our legislators down in Springfield feel like they got to be on the team, they sided against the black, the first governor to me that spread the money out, right? It was like, I mean, talk about, you remember during this time, it was like everybody had millions of dollars to spend in their districts, everything now, and they all voted for it. Then they was like, the pension ramp was a failure. It's like, you voted for it, just spent the money. Well, that was another thing. You know, I, I, maybe I'm a little too technical. No, I, I, actually, I'm sure I am. But there were certain things like like that. What you're talking about is the pension bill, right? What was it a billion dollars or what mm-hmm. was that? Something like that. I don't know. It I don't was, know. What it was numbers. huge. But you know, uh, that was supposed to go towards the pension payoff and and accounting financial things. You don't use that money for who everyday voted for expenses. It? I got, I'm with you, Ty. I'm with you. But who voted for it? Did the speaker was the speaker there? Was it was the senator? Sure well, I'm saying because guess what? It's always see. I, I was at. They also did things that was like uh, when money was allocated for stuff, he take it and, and spend it somewhere else. Sort of like our property tax dollars. 
Wow. Well, let me break it down for you. You know, like our property tax dollars, you know how like when they undervalue, you know how like when all those big buildings get built uh-huh. and the speaker and Burke and all those guys chop it up and they be like, I'm going to take that one, I'm going to take that one and we're going to get a property tax but, cut. But shouldn't you be, well, it's not really, I was going to say you should be talking about the assessor's office about that. Uh, they, but they they thwarting him too. See, my thing is state government has been set up for legislators to fleece us. It well, is. It well, is. Not legislators. It's, it's, it's Special legislators. Yeah, everybody ain't making that. <laughs> right. Every, but I'm saying that I believe that state government has become the piggy bank of the a, of a certain class, um, of certain level of politician. And Rob Bogoyevich redistributed the piggy bank, and they was like, it's enough. We got to get rid of them. Let me go to the phone lines, though. So this, this is a kid. You're on the top show. What's up? Good morning. Good morning, Ty. Good morning. I am so thrilled. I'm so happy that the governor is home. I am just elated. I can't wait to hear him because somebody said people are shaking in their boots now that he's home. No, they're wetting in their pants now that he's <laughs> home. But I'm about to tell you something. I was listening to the Republicans. And they are so outraged. I wonder why they are not outraged at a, 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 a former state representative who's been charged with criminal sexual abuse, criminal sexual assault, official misconduct, stalking, aggravated battery. Now, this is according to the Sun Times. And Manigan knew about it in 2018, and there's still nothing has happened. Are they outraged about that? No. Nope. Black people nope. like no, they're not. No, they're not. But black people like Governor Bogorovich because those of us that ride the bus will never forget the ride free bus fast. And the seniors talk about it all the time. And the and we love the idea he appointed our sister Doctor Carol Adams over the Department of Health and Human Services. White folks hated him for that. And we love the idea, some of us, that he appointed Roland Burroughs for senator when, when, when uh, 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 Governor, uh, uh, when Senator, what's his name, snubbed him when he got up there. White folks hated oh, yeah. when he appointed uh, uh, Roland Burroughs as senator. And Dick Durbin hated him. He snubbed him. They cut him out of meetings, so nobody better not tell me to vote for Dick Durbin when his mm. term come up. Well, we remember how Dick Durbin treated Roland Burroughs when he got up there when the governor appointed him. So I'm glad he's home. I know the family is glad. His wife is glad. And, uh, and I, I just love Governor Bogorovich. And Sister Zicky, I, I gotta stop you at giving me the sign, but when we come back, I'll continue this conversation. It's the top Chicago. Got Rob Bogorovich is home, man. Do you know the, gut, the man who killed Michael Jackson? Only got three years. We'll be back after traffic and what? The talk of Chicago. What? <laughs> I'm saying, like, he got three years for killing Michael Jackson. You talking about the doctor? The doctor. Oh. So anyway, no, I just... Oh, yeah, I get right. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're saying. I'm saying that... Here's, here's the thing. The black elected officials in Springfield were convinced by the white boys in Springfield that they needed to be part of the hanging of Governor Bogoyevich even to their own detriment. Right? So black legislators did not have to stay to get what they wanted. They did not have to be like whatever Madigan says. And that's another reason they had a problem. Because you could go to the governor and get something. And you could go between the governor and Emo. They could put a package together. There were more black lobbyists. There were more black people eating and participating in state government. And they have convinced us that he was the criminal as they have cut you out. And then what they got the black folks to do. After that, and let me tell you how Madigan was so smart. He used that to consolidate power even further. Now you can't even freaking fundraise for yourself. You got to get it from me. You can make this much. I'm going to increase my power to stop. And I am saying to th- right now, there is nothing that I heard from Rob Bogoyevich that compares to any of the allegations that we're reading about right now. Mm-mm. Nope, I don't see them. That, and you telling me that hospital? We going to see how they... Oh, sh- you know, I, I, I can't really say. But I will say that uh, Rod's circle all got in trouble. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like this wasn't like there wasn't things going on. I just don't know what they were. I'm I, I'm with you. I'm telling you. That they didn't even have the time to get as dirty as Madigan and them have been. <laughs> oh, no, they can build up. They up, could like, not have. And I'm saying, like, let's be clear. The reason that they got rid, the reason that everything went so hard with, um, is because they chose who to attack, right? If he would have kept his, the, you saw them do the same thing they did to Ken Duncan, right? You are upsetting the apple cart. Like, look, yo, this dude is giving the niggas more money than they supposed to. And they not just getting, we wasn't getting just social service money. And then on top of it, with Carol Adams over DHS, that meant that the black, that's like the biggest billions of dollars to be spent. That's where you saw all of the, the um, violence prevention money, right? That's when you saw people in community organizations. That's when you saw a ceasefire and all the things that matter to us getting funded. They cut all that shit, and the niggas been sitting around like it's all good. Oh yeah, I mean that's one reason I'm I'm, I'm pissy at him because he screwed it up. Now he had something golden and he screwed it up. Who? Roy. And I'm not talking about the sentencing. I mean being the governor. I mean he screwed it up because he because of his poor fundraising skills. I mean, God no. He could raise money. He knew what the hell. No, I'm saying it's poor. Uh, uh, can I just say this? It's I, stupid. I, I, for I will say he got out of. He, he was out of hand. He had something, but he felt like it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't what he need. What he, he felt it wasn't what he needed. Can but I make he, a recommendation? He had enough to keep Madigan always in check. Can I recommend that black elected officials who are watching this? Because I know y'all watching it right now. That y'all don't go jumping up and down. And when they tell you to put your ass out there and go jump and say negative things about Rob Bogoyevich, don't. Because the black community is not hating him. Right? The people that vote for you are not mad at Rob Bogoyevich. The people who vote for you were doing well under Rob Bogoyevich. Really. You ain't, ain't no black lobbyist. You ain't seen. Springfield ain't never been to say. It's about as. Man. They no, on a, no. They're on a black austerity plan in Springfield. See? And we got more... That's what I'm saying. That's, why, that's another reason I'm mad at him. Because he screwed it up for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, because... Part of it. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is... You, the thing is... Black folks would get there and be complicit. They wouldn't even... Like, they wouldn't even feel like they could bust up the circle. They would come in and be like, how do I become okay with the speaker? Like, their mentality is, I get here, how do I get right with the speaker? They don't go and say, damn it, here's what power base I got. I'm going to consolidate around that. I think part of the problem, and uh, most people probably would disagree, part of the problem is, is he made this personal. I mean, you can say, I'm going to bust this guy up without being Tied. nasty with him. Tied. You say that, and it's like because he still is the speaker, and you and he wasn't gonna stop that. Okay, and I'm saying that again. The speaker, it's like you say it's personal because he didn't say it out loud. When they send that shit, like, so let me like I'll give you an example. The speaker has never said a word about Mays Jackson, right? Mm -hmm. Like out public that I know. However, there was a point. When they started doing personal shit. And they had minions that were acting. And if they weren't acting on his behalf, they portrayed it as if they were acting on his behalf. Right? From the mail that started coming to our house. To the attacks that happened to carry to a variety of things. To my clients all being told that it was recommended to them that they not work with me if they wanted to be successful in Springfield. I get that. Right? So, you say it's not personal. That shit was personal. Oh, yeah. It's like, and so you don't, I mean, I always say like they, because they, they've been able to hide their hand and say, but you know, when it's coming that you don't ever go hear the speaker say block, but you know, when you lose, when you go from $30,000 a month to three, you know where it's coming from. Cause there ain't nobody, cause your clients been with you and they tell you, man, they told me it, it just don't make sense for me to work with you. I, don't, I, I completely you lived understand. It. So I'm saying it's. I, I told you my story. I already said, hey, Todd, I'm going to bring you on this deal. He gets to talk to, to the client. The client's like, you bring him on, you don't get the deal. 
I know that that that's coming from somewhere else. So yeah. my point is, I'm not making no. It's like shoot, I bet it was coming from Mike McClain. <laughs> I guess my thing with this is, is like we make excuses for our victimization. I look. Let me tell you something. Go ahead. Rod never liked the speaker, but uh, that ain't got nothing to do with me. I don't care who does. I, I don't care one way or another. That's between them two. Mm -hmm. But we came in the same year, and from that point, he was like, "This guy is my enemy." I mean, it was just through his actions. I mean, damn! If I was a black person and I came to Springfield, I would be looking around my neighborhood and be like, "This guy is my enemy." I don't. Uh, I don't argue that. <laughs> but this guy has all the power, so your job is to extract some. And I'm just saying. But Rod had his own power base, and he had Dick Mel, right? He had so, Dick Mel too. They broke up. I don't know how. I don't know. I don't know why. But again, he had the ability to come. His old man didn't come down there and say, "Go down and be complicit with Mel." With uh, the, old, the interesting thing about Rod is, once he got his power base, then he broke up with Mel. So I always wondered how that that worked. Because Mel didn't get what he wanted, the appointments that he wanted. Rod was like, I'm my own man. It's like, it's the same thing, but all I'm saying is... Yeah. I, you know what? I, I mean, I'm just old-fashioned. The guy who brought you to the table is not the guy you kick to the curb. I feel that same way, too. Until that guy kicks you to the curb. And I'm not saying that that's what's happened in that case. But what I am saying is, As is family, that... Family I'm family telling you that black folks family. don't get... Rob Bogoyevich didn't get sent to Springfield and been told by his political leader, you go get along with Madigan and do what he says and don't get in no trouble. What he said was, you go down there, we got our own shit up here, you ain't got to be subservient to anybody. You go and you go fight because they can't take you out. Now, now I, I, I'm, and he elevated I'm from that. I'm just how I saw it. He became a congressman and, from that. And I could be wrong, but I didn't think that it was a subservient thing. I just thought he was being mean. I, like, I mean, to the speaker? Like, who fuck? Mean to, listen to you. Mean to the speaker? Fuck. Like, so again, ask Gary LaPelle about being mean. Gary LaPelle, <laughs> he's lucky he even has a job. The speaker probably should have cut him off of both of those See? jobs. After, See? Uh, See? I'm saying, Rob McGoy, that's it. What you're hearing is the difference between how our legislators are taught and how theirs are. Rob went on to become a congressman from not being cool with the speaker. Come on, let's go. To okay. You are... You are tuned in to the Talk Shaggle 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my clothes. Troy, all right, soldier. Time in. We're having a good time with this conversation. conversation. We're going to continue this. We want calls. Give us a call. 312 374 312 374 8130. What are your thoughts on Rob Bogoyevich getting out? I'm going to tell you, I'm pretty happy for him. You know? Like, I, I think he's happy for him, too. Todd, and, and, and I think we were having an off. Oh, wait, let me stop. Top Chicago, 1690. What's up to everybody? It's the top of the hour. You know how we do. Got to say what's up to Samantha Thomas in the newsroom, as well as Miss Sonia Escobar. <clears throat> we are having this conversation about Governor Rob Bogoyevich and his release. Todd, I'm going to take some more calls. But Todd, you know, you were saying something about, we were talking about the speak. Oh, this was an off-air conversation, but I think it was really interesting. You said you and, describe your relationship with Rod in the house and his relationship with the speaker. I guess what I was saying is, you don't have to like the guy, but you have to respect the office. Oh, so good. And it just appeared that he came in like, I don't like him, so I'm just going to spit on everything. <laughs> um, now, let me ask a question. Do you think that, now Rod was not a, um, Rod was not, he's not uh, Irish. No. So he's from that Slavic, the Eastern Serbian. European, Serbian, right? And he comes from a different part. He's not the southwest side of Chicago. Okay, no. Right? So the thing I was trying to explain or say to Todd was, and you were saying that from the day he got there, he was nasty to the speaker. Right? Yeah, it was like, uh, when, when I, I say nasty, nasty, I mean, you could tell it was like, this guy's my enemy. And so probably he got elected in spite of the speaker being his enemy and because he had his own oh, no, power. He got elected because, because of 
Dick yeah. Mill. Dick Bell. Yeah. But because Dick Mill had his own power base That's that was right. not reliant upon the speaker That's as right. a white person. So he was so Rod was able to go to Springfield even if he had a chip on his shoulder against the speaker and stand up and say, hey man, I don't like you and I don't like what you did to my community and I ain't got to be scared about it. And So some people, so I'm saying that, you know, you said it appeared as he came down as he just didn't like him. I'm going to say that there was probably something that made him not like him except for he didn't feel like he had to be scared because he was going to be punished. Hmm. Right? You were we are sent down to Springfield. The speaker don't even play in black races because he knows that when your mama sends you down there, your mama is gonna tell you, you don't you be making no trouble with that speaker. Now don't get it uh, twisted now. Bogovich voted with the Democrats. Uh, that's but I, I'm with you. Yeah. He voted with the Democrats for his interests. He didn't vote for the Democrats and say, I'm not getting nothing out of it. He didn't vote and say, what he, I bet you if you look at his list and what he took, he knew to get something. And Todd, his lack of subservience got him a promotion because while everybody else stayed in the, in the house. No, he didn't. What he did was he ran a, a local race at the time. Timing is everything. He uh, he became a congressman. Timing is everything. Yeah. You became a county board president. Timing is everything. <laughs> timing is everything. Yeah. All of the appointments, timing is everything. Let's not do that. Let's be clear. Like, there's a difference when black people are sent to Springfield. Todd, is it true or not? The speaker don't really play in black races. No, you're absolutely right. Because he knows Because he knows you Negroes are going to do whatever he say when he gets there. No, don't be finished myself. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because he knows it's going to be a Democrat. There's, there's two things as I see it. He knows it's going to be a Democrat, and he knows it's going to be a Democrat who is not going to have a lot of support behind him. Right, because he knows that black folks ain't going to... Black folks will be like, is it good for black people? What does the speaker say? No. Because black people, because he knows that Joe Smo is not going to pay much attention, uh, and you are always going to be in trouble. So it's like, I'll help you. Yep. Mm -hmm. See how that works, Shelby? Give me your first bar out. Give me your and guess what? And guess what? They no, what they say is give me all your all the resources that's supposed to come to your community. We gonna we gonna have our people do the work in your neighborhood, and then we gonna give you the social service dollars. No, what he'll say is he'll say. One day, I'm going to need a favor. <laughs> That's pretty much. And, and really what he says is every day, I'm going to need a favor for the rest of your life. Well, no, and every once in a while he come by and he say, the speaker needs your vote. Mm -hmm. and, that, and, and, and he won't even call you himself. No, he won't even. Oh, no, yes, he will. You don't know if, if it's a real vote. You know, yeah. If not, you don't know the speaker. The speaker would, would go on the floor and he'd, he'd come to your desk. Right, and say, the speaker needs you. He'd be like, the speaker need, like, like he, well, he wouldn't say himself needs you. No, <laughs> <laughs> he would say that he say, but he referred to himself in the third person. Uh, he re referred to himself <laughs> in the the office that he held. Uh -huh. You know, it's not Mike Madigan; <laughs> it's the speaker. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's go to Ron. Ron, you on top of Chicago, sixteen ninety. Thoughts on Robert Woodbridge coming home? Hey, yeah, hey, good morning, guys. Good morning, uh, May. First of all, I just really want to thank you for providing that perspective. You know, I I had heard those things in terms of him at least being fair to black people and really by him saying why because they put him in so and that's what we want i know we criticize democrats until we vote for them we don't get anything but the main reason i'm clearly home because come on that was that was excessive i know i mean we know people that shoot people and rape yeah. people and get out but last before i go i think it was sister sakia said um the seniors uh, appreciating him because they got free ride. Just want to uh, point of clarification. There's nothing free. That's called subsidized. Uh, you know, people pay for that. I need people just get me. They want free transportation, food stamps, housing and stuff. You know what? People pay for that. So uh, people need to work. That's, I just had to make that comment. There was nothing free about that. Now look at that. I, you know what, Ron? I, 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 can, I can go with that. But when I, I'm going to tell you, when the same people can get Donald Trump a tax break, right, and then tell you that you can't get, they won't help you get to work, right, when the same people can undervalue the Sears Tower by a quarter of a billion dollars so they can make $10 million and we all got to live with the, we got to make up the quarter billion dollar difference, I'm just not hearing it, man. 
It's like, like I, I think Rod was like, come on, man, y'all shaking the whole damn state down. Y'all are shaking the whole state down for your personal gain. Y'all can pass some people out there. We can't do it. Ain't nobody. Let me go to Hope. Hope, you're on top of Chicago 1690. Hope. Nope. No Hope. hope. Dang, Hope, call back because you had a good one. Gino, you're on top of Chicago 1690. Hey, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, and I too am um, triple, triple train right along with you, uh, brother May. Uh, glad the uh, man at the house with his family the way it should be. Uh, I, I recall uh, his brother, uh, Robert uh, Bergoglio, was saying that uh, first uh, approached uh, the governor, saying that I got lots of money and I want to get into politics. And then, you know, I think he said five years later, they on the phone with the FBI taping, and from that, uh, Rod goes to prison, and uh, Preston goes to uh, the state capitol. Right. Being the person, being the person who don't believe in coincidence, you know, I was just wondering, well, 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 well what do you think about that? Have that ever crossed your mind that possibility? Because uh, they knew Quinn, uh, Quinn was the lame, but they knew he was out. Right, Gino, can I tell you what? Gino, I'm gonna tell you, man. I'm going to tell you, 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 you hit it on the head, brother. It's like, so this is, this is my thing. How are you on the same phone call? How are you on the same phone call? Black folks done forgot the call, right? Or it's like, that guy needs to stay in jail. They was both on the phone talking about us. Like, that was, that, right, they was both on the phone talking about us. Both of them. And they was both conspiring to deal, to trade the seat. For something. You, you see how that be working? And you know what? And Rob wanted to be president too. See how? Yeah, he thought he was Rob, Rob about to bounce right up to president too. Hey Amen. That's what happens when you go to gut. Thank you, Gino. You, so, I mean, but the best way to get your competition out of the way for president, send him to jail. They got two of them at one time. Two in one, two in one shot. Because they got Jesse Jackson out of that too. Both of them thought they was going to the presidency. It's the top of Chicago. Hey, man, you know what? I wonder what Barack had to do with all this. You think Barack was like, man, I could get rid of all these dudes at one point. Look, it was a Republican Irish prosecutor. I, I have no idea. <laughs> we talk about it all when we come back to South Chicago. It covers you on the African-American thing. Correct. More of The Morning Show with Mays Jackson coming up. I know. And look, all this. So this what I. So dear my friends in the legislature. So again, you do realize today that the press is going to be asking about what else was on that call. You think he talked about any other legislators? You think he talked about any other black people? Oh, no, those, those, those are, <laughs> well, it has to be some people who, who they think are viable. And so they're only going to go with big names, I would think. So I can't wait to hear what else they talked about. So what was JB supposed to get out of that? Just, he's just a power broker. No, remember he was trying to get the treasurer's spot? Was mm -hmm. I'm just saying, y'all, it's like, <laughs> this is all I'm going to tell y'all. All the black people. What he wanted was, yeah, what J.D. wanted was the help of his machinery, I think. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what, I, what I'm telling y'all is, is that to black legislators, this is going to be a time where if you march your ass out there, and it's, you, they're going to have some black legislators that are going to be out there commenting and being like, I think he should have stayed in jail, blah, 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 blah. I don't think any of them are going to say that. I'm going to tell you that the team players, there's going to be some team players that are, right now this is the time when people are going to try and prove to the speaker again how loyal they are to I him. totally disagree. Okay. All right. We'll see. I think black people are going to be like, hell, he's going home? Shit. That's cool. Everybody everybody say hell. Everybody know one Who go said home, he's so. cool? Who said that's cool? You. That's no. what I think they're going to say. But I doubt it. Somebody, can we make a bet that there's going to be a black legislator that says, uh, this All right, your porch for my uh, Buick Encore. No, thank you. <laughs> Who will it be? Oh, wait, what year is your porch? 2018. All right. My Buick Encore is 2015. I think this is fair. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about as fair as it is for black people in Springfield. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I, I'm with you, Mike. It's like, y'all keep, and Trump go, I, it's like, I don't know why they keep poking the bear. Like, leave that man alone. You talking about Trump? Yep. Stop, stop, like, stop. Here's the deal. So Lori Lightfoot is kicking him. You know she got, she still ain't got her federal ambulance money yet? You know, she they'll plug her budget. She needed $168 million oh, from yeah. the federal government. Yeah. She still ain't got that. And every time... Real shame on them, huh? Now. Um... Um, I, I just, like, I feel like that man was 100% a victim of them saying, teach this motherfucker a lesson. And for all the, like, I feel like he got a Ken Duncan, right? He got an intense Ken Duncan, because Ken Duncan couldn't, couldn't affect the way, the change. I'm telling you, yo. Like, I don't know if anybody, like, I remember expressly going to his inauguration and being like, damn, I did not know it was this many black people in Springfield. And I just remember the parties and I remember, like, everybody getting work that was black doing something. Something. Like, just something. Mm -hmm. I remember... Remember Clayton Harris was the chief of staff at IDOT and the white boys worked around him. Stanley and Gilbert were there. They was like, and the whole premise was, y'all can go take care of black people. Give them contracts. Give them, right? And they would fight with you and for you. And when all the tricks would happen, I and all the tricks and all the people that were trying to hold us back were all the Madigan people. that had been there for years and entrenched like, what the fuck are y'all doing here? Get out. I got nothing against the. Uh, I, I I like that black but people were getting stuff. I wasn't. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm Robert. Saying that wasn't my battle. I just felt a, a little insulted. Uh huh. <laughs> I mean, but again, that's our challenge, right? That's remember you was just telling me about it. It's like so you felt a little insulted, and they was like all of the the political class was insulted that wasn't that was stuck with the team so they was okay with it all no, going I was insulted that he was talking about me uh -huh. why but everybody was why's your name come out why, why my name, name coming out your mouth man cause your name was coming out of everybody now <laughs> you just had selective outrage <laughs> cause if that's the case I know one of your friends you should have been real mad at <laughs> can you feel it can you feel it can you feel it you are tuned in to the Top of Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co-host, Toho Stroger. Hey, Todd. If, Blake, if Bogoyevich has stayed in jail, um, do you think... Would you have been happy if Bogoyevich stayed in jail? Should he have stayed in jail? No. Why would I be happy about that? Should he have stayed, you think? No. I, I'm, I'm with uh, you and a lot of other people. I thought he'd been over sentenced. For what sure. if the speaker asked you? What? What? The, <laughs> if the speaker asked me what I thought. You're about like him, Todd. I'd be like, why is that my business? Uh, oh, yeah. What if he said, Todd, we want to bring you back, but we need you to be against. Um, we can put you back on, but you gotta be against um, Rob Bogoyevich. This is an outrage. I'd say you know that's not how I roll, my brother. <laughs> you call him your brother? He'd be like, I ain't none of your brother. All right, John, let's talk Chicago sixteen. No, no, he wouldn't say that. No, he might just get quiet. Right, he'd get quiet and he'd be like, somebody get this black dude out of my office. Isn't the time limit up? He's, he's colored. All right, Tamiko, you're on Top Chicago 1690. Good morning, gentlemen. How are we doing this morning? I'm feeling great. Todd, sweetheart, you know I love you. But I just got one question for you before I make my comment. Yes. Do you believe that Nat Turner was a murderous maniac? Uh, I'm, I'm trying, trying to, to see how that relates. But, well, I'll, I'll let you know it, we'll soon as you answer the question. Uh, do I think it was a murderous maniac? Nope. Yeah. 
No, I do not. Turn that radio oh, down. Oh, okay. Well, at least that's a good thing. But I, I'm so happy that Rod is home. I'm, I'm so happy that Blow go home. They better be lucky that he did, that Trump didn't What did he do for you that, what did, what did you do for you that made you so happy? Down like SmackDown. He can take any office that he wants to in Chicago. You know what, that, right? What did, you, what did he do for you that made you so happy? I'm just wondering. And listen, black people were flourishing, yes. Yes. Poor people like us, and I'm not talking about free stuff like everybody pretty much seems to think. We were getting good jobs. Good jobs. I know not, I was hired. Not, not, not minimum wage jobs. And we don't even talk about even the training program was paying you good. Uh, I'm going to teach something? you how to do the job, even though they fraudulently you pretty much ran it. A lot of people, we ain't going to even talk about that scandal. But the fact of the matter is, it was pretty much it was flowing. And some people pretty much got better positions after some of those training programs that actually put you into a market to work in. Get it? Got it? Gone. 200. <laughs> yep, I got it. Thank, Thank you, Smeagol. I'm going to say this. We had 200 black employees. Uh, you know what? Let me just say. I'm glad he's home. I, I, I don't care. That, 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 this doesn't really affect me. I'm glad that his parents, and not his parents, but his children, his wife get to see him again. I just thought the guy was an idiot. Mm -hmm. That's different. Okay. All right. Well, it got nothing to do with Madigan or anything like that. I mean, those guys aren't really in my life anymore, so I don't really, you know, yeah, man. ain't my thing. Okay. Let's go to Carolyn. Carolyn, you're on top Chicago 1690. Hey, Mays, how you doing? Good morning to everyone. Good morning. I am, I am so ecstatic that he is home with his family, with Patty, uh, with his daughter, uh, you know, because he needs to be home, and I didn't think that he should. Oh, Carolyn, did we lose you? Let me tell you something. And can I tell y'all something on the real? You do not find me being like, ooh, sympathy for the white guy. But for, you know what? I feel like Rod was like Robin Hood. Right, like Rod was like Robin Hood that would be going in and fighting evil King John, King Richard. I, I can see I, I was too close to Rod. <laughs> I guess I don't see anybody like that anymore. Oh ah, man, I'm, I'm a little jaded. Mm, I see you are, but I'm gonna tell you, I really. You know what I told you? Every man has a feet of feet of clay. Maybe I was just too close to, to clay feet. I don't get it. Maybe you can tell me when you do your amazing black fact. Because it is that time. Oh, darn it. So you have your amazing flat? Are you ready? Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, no. Okay. So, guys, it's that time again. It's Black History Month. And up next, Todd Stroger with the amazing Black Fact. This Black History Month, the WVON Morning Show is proud to present Black, black Facts. Facts. With today's Black Fact, here's WVON Morning Show host Todd Stroger. Thank you, Mr. Announcer. Mays, our black fact today is about how our state of Illinois has been a leader in having black people elected first. And we'll start with John Jones, who, as we know, was elected uh, to the county. He was the first person uh, to ever be elected, a black person to be elected to a, a high office in the North. Uh, we have, uh, of course, uh, John Stroger. I wanted to throw that in there, <laughs> who was elected as the first black president of the county board. Uh, we have um, Carol Mosley Braun, who was elected as the, uh, the senator, first black woman uh, to be elected senator. Uh, and, you know, since Reconstruction, the, really the, the first black person to. And, we have been a leader in so many things for African Americans. Um, I think that we will find, well, we'll also throw in this mayor we have now, who is the first black. Uh, Do it right, LGBT black. LGBTQ. IA black. IA black person ever elected. And Mays, that is our black fact. For today. Hey man, now if we could get all of those black people that we got elected to be black, remember the black I, I people. I skipped Oscar the priest, didn't I? You, you can't. How could you skip Oscar the priest? That's I, where you got to start, man. That's because I got caught without being able to write my notes. <laughs> ah, all right, y'all. Well, we'll be back after traffic news and the weather. We'll continue this conversation. Can you feel it? Can you, Can you feel it? it? 
Can you feel it? Dum 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 dum. Yeah, why would I not want Rod to come home? I mean, he may have dissed me and stuff like that, but yeah, you know, that's not like jail time. <laughs> can you feel it? We may not talk to each other when we see each other, time. Now, can I tell you what? You know who who has got the. So what happens when you come? So first of all, I gotta show Patty Bogoyevich so much love, right? Cause you know, after year three, people usually tap out on you, right? They usually tap out on you. Then power of I. The power of I. Okay, can we get them to do a better job with this? Listen, I, like I mean, can we? Who who do we talk to? Cause I mean, they, that's they 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 should tell us the day before, right? What the same totally people? Agree. We'll talk after the show. Oh, okay. With somebody to love. Yeah, Rod, I, you know. But look, hey, Sean Howard, you'll appreciate this. I wonder who he's going to get his shoes shined by now. <laughs> Could you imagine coming home to find oh, out? <laughs> I think I know what you're talking about. Could you imagine coming home to find out that your top black man done joined the opposition? Could you imagine coming home and finding out that everybody stay loyal except your main man, your Cubs fan, your right hand, and you joined? Not only did you did you bounce, you joined Madigan. Like, how's that meeting gonna go? I don't even think there'll be a meeting. Can we throw him a party? I wanna throw a party. Oh, can we throw a welcome black party? Rod, welcome black. That would just make all the black folks mad. <laughs> See, my thing get. <laughs> I go to a. Oh, no, but Sean, for real. For real. Come on, man. If I took you from shiny shoes. To the top of the freaking government, and then I, and then even after I hijack the people for their money and steal the money from the kids, I then go join the ops. Man. Man, that's, 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 like, see, no loyalty in the game. I mean, it's like, that's like Michael Jordan going to join the, um, Detroit Pistons. <laughs> that's like, the Cubs fans coming to Comiskey Park saying how great it is. I mean, really? Yeah. Uh, Lori, I've given up on that. It's like I'm trying to do it myself. Thank you very much. I think what happens is everybody, like, let me stop. I'm not going to even go there. That ain't no community secret. Shoot. Mugs around here talking about they gonna do to people and they campaigns and make it their job to what? I'm just asking. Like, there's no loyalty in the game at all. That's crazy. Like, could you imagine finding out that letter when you got that letter? I got him flipped to Madigan. Could you imagine? <laughs> could you imagine that letter? Like, what's the reunion party gonna be like? That's funny. I just look at him as a mercenary. No, no. you be a mercenary until, until. But you can't be a mercenary and go work for the. I. You wasn't a mercenary. Let's start here. You weren't a mercenary. You were my operative that I took from the streets of the Chicago and put into state government and raised you up and put you at a state department. And even after you embarrassed me at the state department, I kept you on. 
Now, he was only a mercenary because his chief went to jail. While his chief went to jail, he was he didn't he went and said, I want to be recruited by the new person. Huh? Got to eat. I got you. He was. He got plenty of ways to eat. But again, all food ain't good food. So now you gonna go? Yeah, dog. That's. I. I'm gonna just tell you that this is why after this next cycle, I'm going to become the Black Darth Vader, because we make excuses for everybody's disloyalty. Like I'm just saying, there's nothing you could do. He's not going. He's not. I mean, what? Why wouldn't he? He work with candidates. Not you it. wouldn't go work for Madigan. You wouldn't go work for the person that put your man in jail. That made it his job to put your man in jail. Madigan I, didn't put him in jail. The prosecutor put him in jail. Oh why did the, Why did he be getting in trouble, Todd? Because he was helping black people. That's why he got in trouble. That's really why they went after him. That is. Uh, I don't know why they went after him. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. I think they were prosecutors are, are always trying to overdo Ooh, I can't wait for Rod's book either. I'm I'm gonna be first one in line. He He's good, huh? He no, nah, he can't really have a good one now. I don't think the book's gonna. I don't, if it's gonna have a book, I can't see it being any. Different I'll be reading book. it. I'll be right there to read it. I just don't think he has anything to say that you don't know. That you don't know. Oh my life, I've waited. To see your smile again In my mind I've waited Come back to me I'm begging you please Come back to me I want you to come back to me, begging you please, come back to me. Lord knows that I have tried to live my life as one. Friends tell me to go down. Tough times won't last for long. Why abandon? You are tuned into Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Josh Children. Now, I was going to be talking to State Representative Cam Howard. I mean, excuse me. Oh, my God. State Representative Cam Buckner who is the sponsor of House Bill 4865. That is what I am calling the What's Center for the Black People Bill. They call it the BEP Bill. But basically it is us saying no longer do we want the state to give away contracts to black people as minorities. We want our cut proportionate to our participation in the state. Uh, unfortunately, as you can imagine right now, this is a time when bills start moving in Springfield. And so he is stuck in a meeting with leadership I want to point out something, Todd. Our bill went to rules committee yesterday, which means that they are trying to smash it. Well, it doesn't necessarily mean they're trying to smash it, but what they will, rules committee is where they usually try to send stuff so that it doesn't see the light of day. However, uh, we need to, so check this out. Guess who runs the rules committee? Who? A member, Greg Harris. Oh, now, Greg yeah. Harris is a member of the LGBTQ community who is actually right now fighting for their space. So it would be crazy for me to think that the LGBTQ community would not only not be with us, but would be working to block black people getting participation. Does that make sense? So if the what's in it for the black people bill gets stuck in the rules committee, which is chaired by Greg Harris, who is an openly proud member of the LGBTQIA community. Should black people take that as an affront? Hmm. No, I'm just saying. Could you imagine if a LGBTQIA bill came to Springfield 
and somebody black tried to bottle it up and put it in the committee so they could never see the light of day? So this goes back to the speaker is everybody. So it's really not them, it's the speaker. So here's my, so again, to all the black legislators who are down in Springfield, who will be standing on TV today, we will all be watching you clap scream and hey and yes and giving the big round of applause there's a bill in Springfield to give black people equity y'all like that word I'm gonna equity there's a there's a bill in Springfield House Bill 4865 they call it the BET, BEP contract bill I call it the what's in the front of black people bill <laughs> so Todd you're telling me that because that bill went to the rules committee we should be thinking that the speaker is potentially against black people getting an equitable share of the contracts at the state? No. Is that what I should understand? What should I take from that? No. What I was saying is the speaker controls the rules committee. <laughs> so so either way it goes, it's because the speaker's uh, decided. So the speaker is controlling whether black people can get contracts in Illinois? The speaker will control if that bill sees the light of day. So... Under what circumstances would the Speaker of the House want to prevent black people from having an equitable share of the contracts? I mean, under what circumstances? Why would they? Why would he not want that to see the light of day? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to come in, come out or not. That's, okay. I mean, so this is. will tell that. Got it. So here's what I want to be clear on. I want to be clear to the WVON listening audience that our bill to make sure that black people get out of the minority bucket and get into the descendants of American slavery contracts so that we can get our own fair cut has now been assigned to the rules committee that is chaired by a member of the LGBTQIA community. So, I'm not hating on none of that. I'm suggesting that the speaker should be supportive of the bill. Right? And I'm suggesting that the chairman Harris. He might be supportive. I, 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 I would. No I, I'm saying. So I'm looking forward to finding out. But then I would think that speak that that the committee chairman, uh, Her, uh, Greg Harris, who is a member of a group that has not been discriminated as against as long and as strongly and as vociferously as black people, would understand as an ally. Am I using the right language? Ally, you know, like. Don't they, don't they consider, aren't we supposed to be allied? So here's my question. And shout out to my man, State Representative Art Turner Jr., who is also on the Rules Committee. So I know he's going to be advocating to get the bill out. But I guess my question would be, do we need to be calling down to Springfield? Do we need to be calling the Speaker's office? Like, could you imagine? I don't even know what the, what the Speaker's office would do if black people call. You think they'd treat us nicely? All I can tell you is in the past, black people have have uh, called and facts because it was the past so people facts <laughs> and yeah he had to respond so guys I think we're, tomorrow we're going to put out the phone numbers and the facts and the emails and we're going to need to reach out to members of the Black Caucus I guess I have to publish all of that Black Caucus speaker all of those right and we want to talk to Greg Harris matter of fact we got to get Cam Buckner on the air but we got to get Greg Harris because it's in his committee mm -hmm. so we got to get him to explain it to us Oh, but you know, I probably, they probably won't come because they won't talk to me. Remember, I heard that before. That's possible. I'm not going to say everybody loves you. I don't think it. You know what? It's not me, though. It's like it's the community. It's black folks. So I guess my question is, we sponsored a bill. Am, am I not a citizen? Do I not deserve a response? Do not the black people deserve? I mean, I, I'm, I can't accept that. I can't accept that they're just not going to talk. I'm just saying that's not acceptable. What do you mean? You're not on top. So then do I have to go to you? Well, we don't know yet. So. Okay. So, hey, we're looking for Greg Harris as well as Cam Buckner, Art Turner as well. Let's go to the phone lines, though. Because, man, Rob McGuire, bitch, is out. Come on, Carolyn. You you were on. You, we let you go last time. Go ahead. Yes. Um, and what I was saying that I remember last year, Reverend Jackson wrote a letter to President Trump to say, to ask him to commute uh, 
the ex-governor's sentence, and him and his son wrote the letter. So I am glad that he's out. I'm glad that he's home with his family. I'm glad that Patty kept, you know, her dream alive, that her husband would be commuted. And so I'm just I'm just happy today. Thank you, Carolyn. We appreciate you. Let me go to Mandy. Mandy, you're on top of Chicago. Hey, my brother, how you feel, man? Oh, great. Hey, hey that is the great Mandy hey, Muhammad. Good hey, man, y'all go check him out on 47th Street, too, man. Oh, man, no doubt. Hey, look, this... I got another way of looking at it. I mean, he had the best one-liners, you know, around, but this should be a lesson, what happened to him, not for, not only for black people, but black politicians in particular. Anytime you can run up on a sitting governor as he's getting ready to take his little girls to school, that shows what could happen to you. I mean, this man didn't even commit a, a crime, but the the, um, the U.S. attorney kept saying we had to stop him before he completed what he was doing, as if he was plotting a murder. But, you know, there's so many sub-stories in there I mean, someone had mentioned earlier about Roland Burr's. We didn't even know. Um, Munir and I used to go to, to D.C. Like they would have a meeting with the constituents every Thursday. No one knew about it. And uh, I think it was since as a kid, Durbin hated Burr's. Yeah. And we looked at him with disdain. But it was Burr's who opened up those doors of the, the uh, U.S. Senator's office uh, to black people. And your beloved President Obama did not back him for re-election. They got that man on. That's your beloved president. Nah, nah, nah. The only thing he's known for is for bringing Ron in, but that's all another story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nah, but that, that's my comment. But and, and as far as those tapes is concerned, you, of course, Valerie Jarrett is on it because she wanted to be U.S. Senator also. So it's oh. a whole lot of stuff. That's why he kept saying, play those tapes. Just like J.B. was on there, Valerie was on there, everybody wanted to be U.S. Uh, US. That's why he said this, <laughs> this is bleeping gold. Right. You know what? Thank you, Mandine. We'll be back after traffic and the weather. More of the morning show. I think Mandine's right. Uh, if, if we heard everything they recorded, then shoot, just about everybody in the world would be uh, impl implemented in something, I would guess, where people would look at them, you know, cross-eyed. Some people would at least. Well, she said it's wrong. That was the last, last one she sent at 7.30. Oh, I don't know. This is ridiculous, though. Here, Todd, you get the kill me. Come back to me. My mother, my mother, my wife says that uh, Janet Jackson doesn't sing that well. She's just really good looking. That's why people, that's why black men like <laughs> That, that too. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, like, well, basically, I was like Mace. Yeah, that's true. I think she's got a pretty voice. Now, so. was that your wife with you? Was that Janine at the game? What? That was Claire. And who was the other girl with her? That was Claire's friend. Okay. She looks like, she looks like she's 12. No, she did not look like she was 12. Okay, babe, so cool. I'm not saying she was <laughs> No, my hey, wife, uh, she wasn't at the game. She got a bad knee. I know I was saying something, but I still remember what it was now. Huh. Yeah, uh, you know, when you're talking in private with people, you know, you're going to uh, say things, just throw things out, see if it sticks, all kind of stuff. So, I think it does kind of, uh, it, it was kind of, uh, I don't know, prejudicial, just playing certain portions of the tapes. Now, of course, I know a lot of people are like, there's no way I want the public to hear what I have to say about anything. I think some people, the feds, were like, hey, we got you saying some stuff. And we didn't like it. Being taped. Boy. I know some people said some crazy stuff when they're just talking. Not always meaning that they are actually going to even try anything. Sometimes anger, sometimes ego. It's all kind of sometimes joke. Mm. 
But hey, if Gorbachev says a, a I'm back party, you know, maybe raise money to, to help his family, uh, get a new start, whatever it was, I'd go. Probably surprise the heck out of him, but I would go. It's not personal. Well, it was personal, but that was yesterday. That took all the that took all the uh, the air out the room though. That's the biggest story. Maze is right. I don't know. The budget address is like small time compared to Bogoyevich coming home. It's funny though, I heard a lot of people on the other show when they were like, Why do you why do you let a black person out? <laughs> I mean, I think. Well, he did. He just didn't let him out in Illinois, mm. right? And of course, we're gonna say, why didn't he let a black person out? And I'm okay with that. But I think that the only two people that are probably more high profile in Illinois that he could let out would be Chief Malik and Larry Hoover. And I wouldn't Who's be Chief Malik, Jeff Ford. Oh, oh, that's right. He changed his name. That's actually who they were advocating for. This? Mm. Oh, you played this siren? You played this siren? I remember hearing that. In the stone. Uh, you know, Valerie Jarrett, I guess, you know, I, I don't know if she's really out of the running, but, uh, uh, but you know, that, I guess, gets you, I don't know what, with Obama, but I'm not sure what you get. Maybe I'm missing something. Um, you know, but if you're forced to put an African American in the spot, which I, my guess is, you know, forced to do it, but, you know, my guess is a lot of pressure to do it. Of all the African Americans, I can think that are sort of, like, qualified and people embedded and people will say, oh, that's, you know, that's, that's a pretty good pick. Um, the one I, you know, that is least offensive and maybe gets you the most because it gets you that Secretary of State appointment is Jesse White. You can argue he's, you know, he's got a lot in common with Obama. He's black and white. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> how is that? Hey, um, no, he's a good, he'd, he'd be a legitimate I'm not pushing anybody. No, I understand. What you're saying there makes perfect sense. Now, he has said he doesn't want it. Yeah. Not privately to me, I haven't talked to him about it, but he has said it publicly. Yeah. That's one thing. If it's actually offered to you, yeah. what do you do? Um, well, you would win the election if you wanted to hold it, you know, I, I mean, just because he's kind of a popular figure. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that's right. Look, it's a good it's a good sentiment. You don't want to be Secretary of State, do you, JB? Oh, I wasn't pushing for me to be yeah. Secretary of State. I mean, I, I think I'd probably do that job, but that's not, uh, but that's how, yeah. So I guess, Todd, it's like, it's so crazy to me that everybody is acting like they don't know the man. I feel like the current governor of the state of Illinois was in the mix for what was happening. Oh, I mean, hell, he obviously was a, a top advisor. And quarterbacking it. And, and it's like, I, my, my thing here is that we do this whole song and dance. And like, I am telling you, it's what's cracking me up is all the people being accused of of corruption and all the corruption that is going on in Springfield right now, the alleged corruption, uh -huh. and they, they're about to be like, it's terrible that we let him. I just think, Todd, that it is crazy to me that we are living through things that are 10 times worse 
in my estimation, I mean, Todd, I don't ever think anybody accused anybody in the Bogoyevich uh, uh, organization of raping anyone or protect or covering it up. I don't think anybody, we saw anybody them leveraging rape. Uh, I, 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 I just feel like this Rob Bogoyevich release is going to shine a light of hypocrisy, the hypocrisy light all over Springfield. And I don't even know how anybody gets to talk about corruption. I mean, I feel like every time somebody talks about corruption, at this point, you're going to be like, remember that time you had called me to ask me about? <laughs> right? Think about it. Uh -huh. And I just think about like, and I, I, I just want to caution black elected officials. Because the temptation for black elected officials is to run to the front and to jump and attack because it, you think it's going to get you points with the white guy, with Madigan. But at the same time, remember, all of the things that you're about to say now will be on video for if anything happens to any of your other colleagues. You did? That's funny. I, I don't look at the world that way. I, I just don't see... Well... I haven't been down there a long time, but I don't see black people pandering like that. That's just not normally. You don't see black people pandering like what? Running to to, to uh, denigrate somebody who's coming out of jail. You walk past. Norm normally, black people are more of the man. I'm glad he's out of jail. Until they call you up and say, "Yo, we need some. We're gonna need you to stand to speak." What you say? How you say you do it? The speaker needs you. No, the speaker says that. Okay. Uh, oh, everybody else says himself needs you to yeah, come out. I, I, right? Uh, no, man. I, I think I can't wait to see how this plays out. I'm going to tell you, I think WVON should throw a um, Rob Vigoyevich welcome home party. I'm telling you, we get a DJ. I bet you that bad boy will be cracking. And you know what? He'll come. Oh, it would be cracking. I'm going to say, you know what? Maybe that's what we're going to do. Let's throw the Rob Bogoyevich, and then, you know what, I want to see if I can get him on the podcast. You know what? See, I'm going to tell I, you. I wouldn't see why I wouldn't. I'm going to tell you what. I got to get him on the podcast. And I'm be, I got to get him on Illinois Minotti. Could you imagine, Rob, Rod, I need you to be my co-host of Illinois Minotti, the podcast. Sure, why don't you come, get him to come in here and do the morning show with us? He, listen, see how Ty said with us? What? <laughs> what? You think I'm leaving? <laughs> Plenty of, people, plenty of people in this world I didn't get along with. He just wanted. All right, let's go to Green. Green, Green you're on top show. Hey, man, thanks for taking my call. You know something? I'm listening to all this uh, glorified Rob because he got out, and I don't have anything against him. But, you know, let Todd say one thing that people don't agree with, and we'll crucify ourselves and black people. We so hard on ourselves, and so we... We, th we come so vicious with tones. It just don't make no sense. Why don't we start loving ourselves first? Oh, Barack Obama is the worst thing that ever happened to the elected system, the electoral system. Hey, he, he won. He did what he did. God bless him. Let's move on. But we'll crucify each other. But then this white boy get out of jail, and we want to act like the Messiah then came to the earth. I know, so I be real. Be real with yourself and love you first. It's Black History Month. Love you first, and then love everybody else. Thanks, Greg. I do. I love us all, but I love the fact that these people that have been sticking it to us, I got some very tight sphincters right now. Top Chicago 1690. We'll do that. <laughs> the Talk of Chicago and the Voice of the Nation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, y'all. It's going down. It's going down. Actually, I don't know. I really don't know. I really just feel like he's a disruptor, but you know he's going to be on the criminal justice reform. Look at Rod. Is, look, he's signing autographs. He is loving being hot, man. That fool is going to be on TV. He is going to be everywhere. Well, you got to guess he's going to try to get some kind of TV gig or something, or radio. Hey, 
How come people ain't calling up and telling you to uh, to make peace with uh, the guy you fight with? <laughs> I'm not fighting with anybody. I'm not fighting with nobody, and it's like I I have decided that. Um, okay, you were yesterday. Who? Dude. Yeah, dude. No, I wasn't fighting with him. I'm just telling whoever whoever hires him that man. You just opened you just opened yourself up to an enemy. That's you, fight. That's not fight. I don't even. Yeah. I, dude is not even significant to me. It's like, but I'm a. It's gonna you. It's gonna man. I just want people to understand. Like it's consequences to your actions, right? It's like people always tell you, oh. So if I told you that this is what it is, and you say, okay, man, that was terrible. But you know, it's just if you don't give a fuck about me and my family, I don't give a fuck about you and yours. I get you. Period. I get you there. Period. And if you can, if you can justify to me why someone who had, who is not that good, you need that to to get you, man. Okay, I'm not tripping on nobody, but I understand. I'm not. It's like everybody makes situations work for their benefit, right? They say they can always forgive somebody when they fuck you over. But when they fuck them over then they call me and be like, this person did this to me. <laughs> no, nah, get the fuck out of here. And it's not against nobody. I mean, I'm not fighting with nobody. But I mean, I feel like when you do that, you made the decla declaration, not me. It's like you pick somebody who you read said what they was going to do with my family to my family. You knew that and you still work with them. OK, well, you told me what you thought about us. Does that make sense? That's not a fight. Now, the lick is, and if I was really fighting, then I would go work for the other dude to teach dude a lesson. Because I would have all the money in the world. So I'm not fighting. Trust me. I'm, I'm, I'm venting. Yeah, I show you a fight. in mathematics. Blackwell earned mm -hmm. for fraternity. He sought out teaching positions in HBCUs due to race-based objections to enhance his own learning. He received awards such as the John Von Neumann Theory Prize, the R.A. Fisher Lectureship, and the National Medal of Science for his lifetime achievements I mean, I think it's like, I mean, think about the, I just think about the number of people that I know that did much better during that era and where they are now. I think about the lobbyists. I think about the companies. I think about the construction. I think about the access that black people had. Um, and I think there's a direct correlation with um, Rod, whether you call it pandering or not, and his relationship with Emo Jones, but I think he oh, understood. Man, 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 good. He understood <laughs> to me where his bread was buttered, and he he fed that base. To me, all the Democrats benefit from black folks. They just we just get ignored by the rest of them because there's no demand. I I agree with you. I'm, I'm with you. Uh, no, I think he was good for uh, for the time he was there. I just think he shot himself. I think anybody that came in even quietly and tried to do what he was doing and told the people at the road builders that y'all going to do this and, and gave it away. And when the Dan Ryan Reconstruction Project and all them white boys, them professional services companies got cut out, I'm telling you that even if he would have never said shit on that phone, they was after him. Right when I'm t when them white boys came and knocked on that door and was like, we need two million of this four million dollars. I'm like, that will put me out of business. They was like, that's really not our problem. Right, and that's coming straight from Matt. And we went to him like, yo, they trying to do us. They was like, you better tell them and get. The <laughs> now they ain't gonna say nothing about what Emo Jones and his crew, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but I think that I think that our elected officials are so used to not having to do shit for black people. Um, it's why they feel so comfortable. It to me. It's why they feel so comfortable bringing us social services back. Dude did social services by giving Carol Adams social services and said, you handle that. But then he went into all departments. So, like, again, when Clayton and Robin uh, Watchamajigan were the chiefs of staff of IDOT, they went in and broke up all those contracts mm -hmm. and was like, yo, we going to separate this because the engineering company just handled everything. And so it was the road builders would decide who got the outreach, got the blah, blah, blah. They were like, man, these people was making... $200,000 a meeting for just doing the two community meetings that go to the project. And they was giving that to the... So it was like this closed network. And then we... Oh, most definitely. And when you opened up and you saw all of that and Rob was like, nah, y'all come in here and get some of this. And then they would try and slow our checks down and try and put you out. You could go up there and be like, man, they done shut me down. They done held me back for three months. Them... Man, them mugs would go pull them checks and be like, y'all better get them fucking paid. Nowhere, you have no access point. Like, I don't know what the access point, and because that all the legislators go to Madigan, you don't, to me, have an access point that allows you. So once he says yes or no to you, then you don't have any other way to go. I got nothing against having a governor who's on our side. That's who I am. You can hate me now, but I won't stop now. You can stop now. You can hate me now. You can hate me now. Mm. Do it now. Don't hate me. Hate the money I spent, the moves I buy. You can hate me. You are, <laughs> you are tuned in to the Top of Chicago, 1698. I'm your host, Lady Jackson. Got my clothes. Tosh, Georgia. But they all tied. We got to do it like this. Got to say what's up to Samantha Jones in the newsroom, as well as Miss Sonia Escobar. You know she is rocking it out. Hate me now. Rob Agoyevich is out. Rob, we want you on the WVON morning show. I'm asking out loud in public because, you know, I don't know if you might not like me or something. So, let me just make sure. Hey, Patty. Remember your man who was carrying the signs, calling, being like, come on. We want Rob Bogoyevich on WVON. And I think it's only apropos that he come to the WVON morning show. Because, you know what? I think this is where he was embraced. Right? Like, you go to all the other people. I still don't understand. White people be like this. I don't know what the heck he did that made white people be like, even, you know, if you go to jail, you are guilty and are pariah in the white society. Mm, not necessarily. Not necessarily. But I can. No, I mean the greatest society. I'm not talking no, about I think the he's. The insiders and the people who do things. Do you think he get in trouble? Do you think they didn't like him more because he helped black people or just because he was just a big hit? Do you think. What I mean, do you think he oh, upset? No, I, I think they just feel that way about anybody. They, that is their. It's. Like, it's our money. No, no. It's well, our government. That too. But it's almost like, you know, if a black person goes to jail, and then like, 
they were innocent, they'd be like, well, you know, he probably did something anyway. He deserved that time he spent there. Mm. Okay. You know how they feel? <laughs> yeah, no, I do. I feel like a big chunk of what Rod got in trouble for though in Springfield was his ability because he was helping black people. Like, I think about the fact that, was he a unanimously impeached? I think Ken didn't come. No, he uh, he got one president vote. Who was that? Deborah Mail. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think Ken showed up. All right. Yeah, I don't think Ken came. All right, uh, let's go to the phone lines. And when we come retired after we do this, I want to talk about how does Rod Bogoyevich's release affect government? Let's go to Linda, though. Lisa, Linda. Is this that Linda? Yes, it is. Good morning. Hey, Good morning. Linda. Good to, good to hear you. Hey, I saw Linda. Hey, she spoke hey, and I she came to the... To get in, boy. Your last day business. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, well, come on, Linda. Talk to me, I sis. got three things, three things. With Walona from Good Time. Oh! No so play, then I'm going to get you, sucker. People forget about that one. That was a classic. It was. I'm going to get you, sucker. Ty, I need to add a chapter to your history. Uh, 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 Miss Steele was the first real black woman as president from the West Side. Oh, okay? that's true, too. Because you know. Yeah. yeah. So I'm throwing it in there for you, Ty. Okay. Yeah. I, I got surprised at 728. I said, oops, is that late? Uh huh. <laughs> Now, let me let me finish up. Yeah, uh, about time to get out. He had no business going in. He just liked the wrongly convicted. And for the brother who talking about, no, he ain't my great messiah. He's not my great messiah. Maybe you didn't have contact with him before he went in. Maybe where you was at, you wasn't, you know, involved. But there was a lot of people involved with Rob because Rob made himself involved with us. And why you wasn't involved, I don't know. That, see, I'm going to tell you, Linda, that's the thing I think. And, and, and I, I think a lot of people, like, I'm not calling him a great white messiah, but I am, if I advocate. He was involved. Right. He was involved. He went to the communities. I didn't care, west side, south side, you name it, he was there. You had a meeting for him, he was there. Yep, and I think that his willingness, see, here's the thing I think. Turn that, I need you to turn your, your radio down. Um, so here's what I think happened with Rod. I think that Rod knew who Rod, like all Democrats, knew that black folks gave him got were the reason he got elected. Remember? And I think that what Rod did was say once he realized that that's how he got elected, he said, "I am going." To, he said, "Skip all of this other bull crap that y'all talking about. I'm going straight to my base." And I think that that was a problem for Democrats because it was going to cost them. They were going to have to be accountable. You were going to have something to compare people to, right? You were going to be able to say, wait, Chicago State, I bet you Chicago State wouldn't be doing $120,000 worth of business with black folks while they had an $81 million operating budget under a Bogoyevich administration. But under the Platt Quinn good government, we started losing because we put our hands and we went to these white liberals and white cons white Southwest green teamers and wound up seeing ourselves set back quietly and our elected officials participated and have not been the same since. I'm sorry, Todd, go ahead. You know, yeah, I'm sorry, but I, I don't want to change the subject, but I heard Charlie Beck uh, on the TV, and he said that he'd gotten rid of uh, merit selection and it was a cronyism thing. Uh, and it reminded me that the reason the merit selection was, was put in place is because the people who interviewed you tended to be white, white Irish, Irish guys, and you never could pass. And under merit selection, your commander could say, this guy can move up. It, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry it's a squirrel, but... <laughs> no, it's not a squirrel because Dead Mel, I mean not Dead Mel, because Kelly Cassidy is trying to do the same thing with judges. Mm -hmm. Right? And again, it's the same thing, though. But I'm just telling you because I think it's a perfect. It ain't a squirrel because, you look, the people that are supposed to be on our team, who we support, right? Right, y'all? This is your mayor. This is your mayor. You love the reform. You love the butt kicking, but you're going to get your butt kicked again. This is the same thing. So you're going to be sitting here wondering why in four years we ain't got no more police. Look, 
the, this marriage selection thing, the reason they're after it, and the reason it's such a cronyism thing now, is because Eddie Johnson filled the place up with black folks to be able to put people in the pipeline. Right. And the white cops got mad and said, get rid of this. When they were running it, they was cool with marriage selection. But it's all good because this is what we do. We allow, we run to the front. We let the white liberals be like, ooh, they kicking such and such butt. And then we let them kick the butt. And guess whose butt? It's like a giant circle. But the butt kicking <laughs> in three years winds up with you got to boot up your tail. Yeah. Let me go to Pastor. Uh, let me go to Anita. Anita, you on top of Chicago. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Hi, hi uh, Todd. I'm glad you're hanging in there. I'm <laughs> sure you know a lot by watching your dad. So I like it when you're on the air. Thank you. But, okay. So this is what I'm trying to say. I guess Rod Bogoyevich did not represent the Confederate thinking, so they had to get rid of him. Yes. And um, I don't know what Rahm Emanuel represented. <laughs> But he didn't do anything either, so I guess he a Confederate too, a Confederate Jew. Ooh. That's my comment. Ooh. Uh oh, morning show. I'll, don't cut me off the air, y'all. Let me go to C H A Free. Cha Free, what is that? Cha Free, say yes. How are you doing? All right, what's up, uh, Cha Free? Yeah, you know, I was um, I was just wondering uh, about this um, this new change of the definition of us, us again. You know, like that. it keep keep us trying to change the definition of us. And so we don't exist, you know, as, as a people, really, you know. And uh, that, 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 that be a lot of Springfield, that definitely does that. But there's a, another situation in Chicago, uh, the affirmative the action, there was, there was a suit uh, filed against the city of Chicago back in 79. The government came in and, and found out that it was only, after we got to have two years of investigating the city's uh, payroll status, only had 15 to 17 percent of the job. Uh, blacks and, and brown Americans only had 15 percent. The 17 percent or less than me, but I was told about I'm the one who, who, who uh, sent the letter in to ask for an investigation. You only need one person to do it, okay? But at that time, I couldn't get nobody, a big top guy, you know, I don't want to call the names right now. They, 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 they wouldn't go for it, you know, it's not really uh, uh, relevant at all. Well, we only got 15 percent of the job, it should be relevant. Okay, so they 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 they, 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 they sell out with give us twenty five percent and the brown fifteen percent which we get both of the forty percent forever. Thank you, Chaffrey. I appreciate it, man. I I, I hear what you're saying. Pastor Greg Daniels, you're on the talk Chicago sixteen. Uh good morning, Mr. Mays Jackson. How are you? I'm great. And to the honorable Mr. Todd Stroger, our former president of the Cook County there. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh I'm grateful for what he did for Mr. He was one of my favorite governors. Uh, Trump is a force to be reckoned with. People might as well get over it. That's who I'm going to be voting for, for President of the United States, uh -oh. for a second term. And here's why, before you guys get too excited about it. He took down 16 notable Republicans. He placed over 200 federal judges. He has two selected U.S. Supreme Court justices. He has 52 U.S. senators that have put gasoline drawers on and go through hell for him. And he pulled down the United States so-called Framing Fathers Constitution and showed them how nude and vulnerable they are. God bless you, and thank you for this comment. Thank you, Pastor Greg Daniels. Hey, Sonia, you got another comment. You got a comment from, uh, let's hear about uh, Blagojevich and JB on uh, Reverend Jeremiah Wright. Good. I mean, how about this one, Dad, if I knew for sure I wasn't running again? Yeah. How about Reverend Wright? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> there. Yeah. You know, how do you say Reverend Wright there? I bet you he'd yeah. take it. Oh, Larry. Huh? Would that be funny? Oh, Larry. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> right there in the center of Florida. It's not God bless America. It's God America. Absolutely. When I would block with a Sunday school, I used to tell them. Oh, uh, That's funny. Ha ha, very funny, mother. Hey, when you're on the telephone call, you got to be like, hey, that's cool. <laughs>
Uh, you know what though? I was thinking about that. That was too. Could you imagine them two white guys sitting on they on their couch in their drawers eating popcorn, talking on the phone to each other, watching? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. JV sitting on the couch. You think JV sit on the couch in his drawers Probably. and be eating? Have, well, have you paying might, attention. Hey, great, great papon, please. <laughs> Servants, please, yeah, please, right. please. Somebody doing his toes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I got this thing, and it's golden. And I, I'm just not giving it up for nothing. Hey, man. I'm going to tell you what. So if Rob McGlynn has got 14 years, what does that mean Sandoval is getting? 5,000? Hmm. I mean, he got... Rob didn't even take an envelope. They don't even got to take it. All his money was campaign contributions. Legal. You know, but you, you know that... Because um, the higher of your office. Not just that, but... The feds come down harder on you when you don't uh, roll over. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's part of why he got out too. It's because he never did admit guilt, and I think Trump liked him. I, oh, let me just run through this list of um, things, Todd. People, I want you to give me just a quick reaction. Because um, I think the Rob Goyevich, I don't know what the electoral consequences are. I know it's going to rattle a lot of people, though, right? And I, but. Because I hear him keep talking about criminal justice reform. So how do you think the release of Rob Bogoyevich affects J.B. Pritzker? I mean, I think you, you were right earlier. It, it kind of like steals the thunder for, from uh, his um, State of the Union speech. I think it also has the potential to damage his presidential aspirations. Think so? Yep. I think that Rob Bogoyevich is going to look around. Well, I don't know. But I'm going to say that. I could see it definitely having a negative impact because now Rod, there's no double jeopardy. He can talk about whatever he wants to talk about. He can say, man, we, because you know that ain't the only phone call they had. Right? Oh, plenty of phone calls. So I'm just saying, if it's me and you said I should stay in jail, I'm going to be remembering everything. I'm just going to say it. I mean, wait, hold on. Because this is what I heard happen to Rod the last time. They had him pack up and come up to the front to be ready to leave. And then they sent him back. Can you imagine the heartbreak? And then you turn on the TV and all the people that you was hanging out with was like, man, leave him in jail. Okay. Yeah, I think I, I probably would be having an axe to grind. What do you think it means for Donald Trump in Illinois? No, or period. He knows he's not going to win Illinois. He's not going to win Illinois, but I do think it's going. It's, he is going to have them in a state of flux. I think Illinois, I think he's going to cause turmoil in Illinois. <laughs> like, and I think this is just the beginning of the disruption. Yeah. What does it mean for the uh, Justin Dep Justice Department investigations that are currently going on? Does it mean they will lose their luster, or do you think that they will go harder? Do you think we'll still see the prosecution? Yeah. <laughs> right, because it's Trump's prosecution system. That's right. All right, how about this one? How does the legislature respond? Because there's two, there's two dynamics. There's the people in the legislature who were there, and the people in the legis who voted against him and voted him out. Yeah. Not that he, and it's not like he's coming back to be the governor. But, again, my guess is that he's had a conversation with almost every legislator at some point. You know, I always be thinking about, you know how you, be, you, know how you ever get into art? There's a lot of new people. It is a lot, but I'm thinking about the old ones. But you ever get into an argument with somebody, but you got to be careful about what you say because they got something on you? Right. So you're like, you know what? I somebody told me, though, that they used to meet with the governor, and and it was a, a bigger crowd. But as time went on, the crowd got smaller and smaller. Yeah. And I'm not quite certain why. Because uh, I, mean, I know a lot of people that met with the governor thought they was going to be on a rocket ship and it didn't work out that way. All I just think, you know what I do? I, I will say that I have one uh, uh, problem with uh, the governor, and I could be wrong. Wait, the former governor or the current governor? No, no, uh, well, probably both. Okay. It's, it's, well, all Democratic governors is that uh, I've seen downstaters become head of departments. I've seen Northside become head of departments. I've never seen a black person from Chicago who was a representative become the head of the department. Oh, but I did, because they didn't want to leave. But I did see, um, we saw Carol Adams get department heads. We saw some black She was never a state rep. Or oh, yeah. But I mean, shoot, so what? 
Like, I mean, what, so they can have another apartment to plunder? No, you kind of missed my point. I get your point. No, I do. I really <laughs> do. I, I did, like, they, they promote from within. They reward their people that have been successful for them. Well, I'm going to tell you what. I am, We are headed down to City Hall today. There's a press conference for Juneteenth. At 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, we're going to City Council. Uh, respectfully going to City Council to represent Black History Month. Hey, y'all, plus it's the governor's state of the state, uh, uh, excuse me, the budget address today. So there's so much going on. Hey, I got to get out of here. And taking plan lasted until 1983. Wow, I didn't know he I lasted. told you. I wasn't that crazy. All right, so for Samantha Jones, in, or excuse me, Samantha Thomas in the newsroom. For uh, Sonia Escobar, the newsroom director of Soul Plane. For my co-host, Ty Stroger. I am Mage Jackson, asking the question every day, what's in for the black people? And if you don't like it, you can still tell them. Tune in to Illinois Minotti on Thursday, because it's going to be a banger. Mage said, we out here. Peace. Live from the WVON Newsroom, here's our new. It certainly will dampen the vote, black vote. I agree with that. I but think they're going to, huh? But what? The Bogoyevich. I don't. I don't think that there's a, a driver for black voters right now. Like I do not feel black voters feel inspired. Okay, huh? but it won't mean anything. I mean, huh? This is a blue state. It's gonna. It's it gonna will go mean so. something for Kim Fox. Oh yeah, well, it might mean something for her. It will mean something because if black folks don't feel driven to turn out, it's like. So I'm hearing that she's up by like 16 points in times. Right, mm -hmm. that's that's not a, that's a tenuous lead. With this far out, and this much money, and this much stuff going. But I think that shows a sign that black people are behind her. Oh, I think it does, but I think that's not. I think, if, but if it's not a driven black voter turnout, right, and they're not running to the polls like this could be the end of our criminal justice reform. But I, I think you also have to think of. The new dynamics of voting, where people aren't going to the polls, they're voting early, they're doing all, they're mailing in. I think that that's good for her. I don't think that accrues benefits. I think the people that take advantage of that, to me, mm -hmm. are white people. Right? Like I think white people up north vote quicker and earlier. I think that the other part of that is, is that it allows. Do they have a pretty big voter? Uh, well, today is the first day of early voting, so we'll see what the what that push is. Somebody says they think they continue to divide us black and brown folks. I don't think they are doing. <laughs> Who is they?